I recognise there's a quorum. Therefore, I call council meeting number 833 to order. As usual, we'll start with a prayer for wisdom. Heavenly Father, grant that we who would seek to serve you may have the wisdom of your spirit, the guiding of your hand, and the grace to serve together for the prosperity of our city, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. National Anthem, please be upstanding. Please be seated. Yeah. Councillors, item one, uh, attendance. Uh, receive an apology from Council, Councillor Corwell. Move the acceptance. Councillor Tozer, seconder. Councillor Peter Young. Put the motion to you. All in favour, show of hands. Against, motion carry. Leave of absence is nil. Condolences. Councillor Pauline Young. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, uh, I rise, it, this is, is quite a sad one, I think, for everybody in this room today, um, that a motion of condolence on the passing of Miss Bridget Kudzius be passed and that a message of sympathy be forwarded to the Kudzius family. Second to Councillor Toza. It is with great sadness that I advise councillors that Bridget Kudzius, Executive Coordinator, Transport Network Management, Transport and Traffic Branch passed away peacefully last Thursday, the 20th of July, after losing her battle with cancer. Bridget joined council in July 2013 and was a much-loved part of the transport and traffic team. Bridget was a respected leader with a proven track record of delivering results across a variety of disciplines, such as infrastructure, engineering and management. She had extensive experience in developing and delivering strategies to promote operational excellence and customer-centric operating models. She led both the traffic engineering, sign and line marking teams, as well as the road closure permit team. She excelled in providing a high standard of service to our city. Bridget was dedicated to her family and friends and touched us all with her positivity, her compassion and natural ability to make everyone feel special. She will be deeply missed by all. On behalf of Council, I extend my condolences to her husband, Andrew, um, and sons, Lachlan and Sebastian, who are both in year 10 and year 12 at the moment. Her family, friends, and especially the work colleagues that have worked alongside Bridget over this time. Rest in peace. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor uh, Owen Jones. Oh, all right, I'll just call the vote first. All in favour, show hands. Against, motion carried, unanimous. Police night, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Gates, Councillor, uh, every councillor's. How goes that? All right. Any other condolences, councillors? No? Then we'll move on to Merrill Minute, nil. Confirmation of minutes, councillors. Any corrections on the, on the minutes? Conf so Move confirmation, Councillor Toza, seconder. I'll second that. All in favour, show hands. Against, carry it unanimous. Mayor's report. Councillor, so 16th of June, I met up with uh, Ambassador for Romania, His Excellency Randu Gabriel uh, Sefta. Uh, this is the first visit to Queensland. 
Uh, we've discussed a multitude of things, one being IT and education on the Gold Coast and in Romania. Next one, Legacy um, Centenary Torch Relay. I was a torch bearer at the Gold Coast uh, hosted final Queensland leg of the Legacy Centenary Torch Relay. And as you know, Legacy is an Australian charity that has supported veterans, families after the loss or injuries of their loved ones for 100 years. Humanita Humanities Research Symposium on the 20th of June. I attend a Humanity Research uh, Symposium for Youth at SeaWorld uh, Resort. The program was hosted by City Point Christian College. The school comes from uh, South Korea, Hong Kong and Singapore. And uh, students presented research papers on various humanitarian uh, topics. Then on 22nd of June, launch of Connect to Home donation. Um, councillors, um, this drive uh, will lead up to the 2nd of August, uh, where uh, our homeless uh, will be able to come and get um, essentials, clothing, grooming, uh, they even bring their pets. And, uh, and so it's going to be a major event for everyone. And donation has already started to our libraries and culture centres. Bowls Australia, on 22nd of June, I present the trophies to the winners of men's pair uh, champions, Ben Twist and Aaron Wilson, and women's single um, were a champion, Cassandra Millerick, and um, the Australian Open is the biggest and most lucrative open lawn bowls event in our country. Three and a half thousand bowlers were in the competition. Um, next one, um, I was there at the BYD. I asked them what that meant. They said it was build your dream. Dolphin uh, launch. The car is called the Dolphin. That's why I was at the Sea World Main Beach. The interesting part here is that um, the uh, they focus on affordable electric car. Um, the, this car in front of you is retailed at 3890 and uh, together with the state government zero emission vehicle rebate uh, of 6000 the price can come down to 32890 So I wish them good luck. Meeting with the uh, Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, on the 27th of June, uh, joined by a round table at uh, the Burley Pavilion. Uh, a lot of things were discussed, ma mainly the pointing out the tourism recovery that we're doing. Uh, on record, we pointed out that, um, that, uh, that the statistics shows that we have welcomed 4.3 million domestic overnight visitors in the past year, which is the new, new record for our city. And of course, I touch on the, the essential of our light rail stage four. Gold Coast ref, uh, referral group meeting. Uh, I was invited to be a key speaker at the, one of Gold Coast reference group uh, who meets weekly. Next one, Global Elite Sport Conference, 29th of June. I gave an opening address at the global, at this conference, Crown Plaza. Over 300 delegates attend attended. This year was the first time since 2019 that event was held uh, in person. The conference brought together the brightest talent for all areas of sport, covering multitude of topics, high performance, sport business, sport marketing, sponsorship and activation, coaching, players engagement and athlete well-being. Next one is Level Up Youth Arts Program Alumni Gathering on the 29th of uh, June, and um, it's at the Surface uh, Transit Centre. If you have time, uh, have a look at some of the artwork that uh, the young artist uh, has got together and uh, put up, and uh, this program has been operated since 2017. Next item, green organic bin rollout has occurred on 30th of June. Uh, we intend to uh, roll out 75,000 new bins, uh, this saves ratepayers about $13 million over five years in state government waste disposable levy costs. Um, 
the first year, I don't think it's free, and then the second year, I think it's $55 per bin, which is about a dollar and a bit per week. Next item was the Gold Coast Central Chamber of Commerce Transport Forum. And uh, I think Councillor O. Jones was there. I'm not sure if you were there, Donna, were you? No. And uh, I delivered the opening address at the Star Gold Coast, around 200 guests. And uh, we talked about active uh, transport infrastructure, active school travel scheme, bike sharing scheme, Hoppo Ferry, uh, Northern Bus Service Initiative and the electric vehicles. And, uh, and anyway, it's wonderful that we're all in it together on tr trying to get our transport um, multi, multi, multiple um, choice of public transport. Then was the Gold Coast Marathon 2023. Um, so I was up early uh, with sunrise to promote it. This is the 43rd edition of the marathon. There's eight different type of races and the event uh, attracted over 24,000 um, participants of all ages, and uh, I had the honour of the starting gun. Um, next item, Griffiths Street Coolangatta Stage 2 Revitalisation Project. Councillor Neil, you were there. Would you like to share some of those? Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, can I say that it's very welcome, the Stage 2. Uh, stage 1 finished in 2016, just as I came on board as a councillor, even though I'd been on the committee. Um, I've had a lot of feedback already from businesses in that southern area of Griffith Street, and they just can't wait for it to happen. Uh, we've got a lot of new businesses that have started up in Coolangatta, and for the first time ever, I think I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We have uh, a huge um, shopping centre in the middle of uh, Coolangatta that takes up a, a big footprint and for the first time in its lifetime it's going to be 100% leased. So I think Coolangatta is on its way up so we have to make sure that we invest to make sure that business thrives in that CBD area and I think this is a great start and thank you for coming down and doing some media with us Mr Mayor. Thank, thank you Councillor. And then on the 3rd of July, Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast came to Australia for the second time in existence. Gold Coast hosted the two-day event consisting of a civic reception um, right here at Council Chamber, celebrate Israel worship, the prayer breakfast followed by uh, a whole day of workshop and festivities at the Marriott Resort. And um, it was wonderful to see the guest speaker, His Excellency Amir Mamon, uh, Ambassador of Israel to Australia. And, of course, Robert uh, Ilatov is the co-chairman of the Jerusalem Pre Breakfast. Um, government representatives from South Pacific send their official representative, including Fijian Deputy Prime Minister uh, Vila Mai uh, Gavoka, Gavoka? Um, uh, Papua New Guinea uh, Ministers of Community Development and Religion, the Honourable James Peter, uh, Deputy Speaker of the Vanuatu Parliament, um, MP, Norris Kamel and MP Jean, Jean Baptiste. Over 300 delegates uh, and from 16 nations came to the Gold Coast to connect and be part of the event. Mail remission to the United Kingdom and France. Uh, met with Michael Rowland on the 7th of July, uh, Head of Parks Operation, and David McLean, Chief of Staff for Royal Parks. The Royal Parks manage London's eight Royal Parks, including Hyde Park. Uh, the parks encompass 5,000 acres of historic parkland. With our own green project in mind, we discuss learnings, learnings from their management of Hyde Park in terms of activation of various precincts, uh, festivals and concerts, security, public, public amenity. Uh, they impressed uh, the importance of proper planning that is, uh, power supply, water, roads access, waste management, anything that's infrastructure underground, uh, we really got to nail it so that we can... Um, well, that's the advice from, the, from the, the, the guys there. They're very generous. What they also shared was that uh, Hyde Park, in the three weeks of British Summer Time Festival, they made 40% uh, of the revenue they need uh, for the whole year uh, for the Royal Parks Estate. So in three weeks, they're able to cover all the costs. So 
Next one, meeting with Trafalgar Entertainment in London, met with the co-founders, so Howard Panter and Dame Rosemary Squire. Uh, Trafalgar Ent Entertainment is a premier international life entertainment business. We spoke about uh, want to get his thought on the Hotter Lyric Theatre and, um, and uh, is, 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 so we went... It's very generous in their time. They're coming over here in September. Uh, Rocky Horror sh Picture Show is going to be on at the Star, so uh, we'll be able to catch up with Howard and uh, so Howard and Dame Rosemary. Meeting with Australian Trade and Investment Commission, um, we visited Australia House in London to meet with Austrade, uh, Miss Elizabeth Bowes, Head of Mission, Anastasia uh, Nishniadish. Trade and Investment uh, Commissioner, UK and Ireland, Warren Bartlett, Deputy Commissioner and Director, Investment Europe, Trade and Investment Queensland. Um, we focus on forging further relationship and we reflect on the last mayoral mission uh, to the United Kingdom. And, um, and uh, the United Kingdom free trade agreement that was signed or enacted in 31st of May the agreement will um, limit uh, tar tariff of over 99% of Australian goods. So um, if we export to the UK, uh, there'll be no tariff on our goods there. So, and it's going to be vice versa. So here's hoping that the um, strength uh, between United Kingdom and Australia uh, continue to flourish. Here, here. Site visit of Viola Recycling and Energy recovery facility in Leeds. Uh, we went and checked that out and uh, they're still building it. And, um, and that is, you see that window there? That was very hot. We absolutely didn't touch it. And uh, 880 degrees Celsius. But the design work and uh, the tonnage they do, um, they're saving seven million pounds for Leeds Council each year, turning waste to energy. And, um, and that wall on the outside is, uh, they call it the living wall. Uh, it breeds uh, peregrine, falcons, herons, and plenty of other wildlife. So you can have um, a waste to energy plant, but it still look uh, very natural. So it's um, quite, quite amazing. And then we went over to Edinburgh, um, KF4. Uh, see that size bus? It's um, it's a full-on bus, autonomous. Uh, we were doing uh, 50 miles per hour, which is about 33 kilometres per hour. No driver, so it's kind of going. Hope it works. And um, the service has capacity of around 10,000 passenger journey. I I, I uh, share this with uh, state cabinet yesterday, and um, their route is 14 miles. And um, the attitude, my, my, my take on it is that um, uh, our trial of our autonomous bus is happening and uh, you can build it to that size. So uh, immediately I, th I thought, well, about the east-west connection, um, you know, that we got on our, our, our plan, um, perhaps we can uh, use autonomous bus to connect our light rail all the way to Narang Station and uh, Rabina and, and that. So um, anyhow, it's it's a thought. A thought. Then there's more autonomous bus. We went over to uh, France Shooting Centre, uh, Keolis, who operates or build our light rail here, and uh, they're using this autonomous bus to move athletes between their their village to the shooting centre, and uh, there again, no uh, no bus. We're trying, we're trialling the same size bus on this one uh, right here. And um, um, they're up to, I think their next trial is Generation 4. And uh, we're on Generation 2. So I've asked them what's the difference and they'll send me the information on that. NBL Blitz, um, going to hit the Gold Coast on the 16th to the 22nd of September. All 10 teams on the, uh, on the NBL will be here on the Gold Coast. So it's going to be good, yeah. And anyway, I'll uh, let, let's see what happens. Tickets on sale on July 28th.
So, and there's a couple of brilliant games there. And um, see you there. Round table, Gold Coast Housing Affordability. Um, uh, we had uh, Housing Minister Megan Scanlon, TMR Director General Mark Critlin, and other industry leaders and stakeholders. And um, we went through on what the state intended to do. And, um, and at the end of it, we basically went, well, how about you do an audit of land surplus to uh, requirement? We are doing it already anyway, and is there any chance to uh, look at, instead of doing uh, six homes, we put together as 20, 20 affordable homes. It's uh, a, an idea there is that uh, it's cheaper to build per home if we got more product to come online. Anyway, it's a small start. We'll have a look at that. Maris Charity Foundation Ball, um, 22nd July. Um, I caught up with some councillors there, but I, I didn't get up in time. Some already left. But uh, this is the 10th year, um, and uh, over $2 million have already been given away. And it appears that uh, they've raised uh, 300000 and uh, so I know I'm congratulating my wife and, and Tracy Woodbury for their hard work. Um, state cabinet, uh, community cabinet, um, uh, it was a privilege uh, to be invited to uh, the Premier and address the whole cabinet in one go. And um, anyway, I'd start off with the fire ants, why not? And, uh, and um and a few other things that uh, we're advocating for. Uh, it was a good opportunity to be able to see everyone in one go. I move, councillors, that my mayor's report be welcome and noted. Second, uh, Councillor Gates, put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against, motion carried. Thank you, councillors. We'll uh, go on clarification of members. I've got Neil here. Oh, OK, we're, we're moving very quickly. Uh, business arising from the minutes. I've got nil. <laughs> then we have the presentation. Councillor Vorster. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. And I genuinely love rising in this chamber to show a lot of love for our tourist parks team. And don't they do a cracking job in communities right across the Gold Coast? Not only creating inviting places for our visitors to come experience the best of the Gold Coast, but also to afford many local families the opportunity for a staycation, rediscovering just what makes this Gold Coast city of ours an incredible place to live, work and holiday. Uh, Mr Mayor, yet again, our tourist parks team have been acknowledged by their industry peers for raising the standard. Um, on, I think, four occasions at the recent Caravan Parks Association of Queensland Awards, they were singled out. And what is startling with their contribution, Mr Mayor, seen through these awards is that on every aspect of service delivery, of care, concern and product, they have excelled. And it's not just one property, Mr Mayor, but properties right across the Gold Coast. Today, Mr Mayor, we're presenting four awards that were presented to the team, as I said, at the Caravan Parks Association of Queensland Awards. And the first, I'm going to start in the deep north of the city, our Broadwater Tourist <laughs> Park, Mr Mayor, and the attendees there, Kim Turner, Alex Evans and Brooke Turner, our park contractor, park manager and assistant manager. Mr Mayor, this award is designed to recognise those parks that have consistently immaculate presentation, regardless of the level of facilities that they offer their guests. This award was presented to us as park owners and operators that have a beautifully presented caravan park that consistently gets positive guest feedback. Mr Mayor, the whole team at the Broadwater Tourist Park recognises the importance of maintaining it. <laughs> and they respect and care for the park in a way that the industry has singled out as absolutely the best. Congratulations to the team. Thanks, Mr Mayor. It's that Tidy Park Award. It's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And it's not just one person's effort that delivers these results, but an entire team. And our team of the year, again, as uh, nominated and approved and endorsed and ticked off by the Caravan Parks Association of Queensland, goes to the Kira Beach Tourist Park. And our attendees there were Michelle and Matt Eichen, Scott Ace down, ears down, ears down, like a turn down service, but an ease down service, and Casey and Adrian, ease down. Um, why don't we invite them up, Mr. Mayor? While they do that, I'll just share a little bit about the award. Mr. Mayor, Michelle and Matt, as on site park managers, are accountable for bringing a professional and warm leadership style to the park. Under their guidance, their team has become 100% guests focused. They've created and nurtured healthy relationships with both the park's guests and their permanent residents. Mr. Mayor, they get the balance right. Now, I'm trying to create suspense, but all of our award winners. <laughs> well, they're in the room, but also up on the screen. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, moving to the north of the south, um, <laughs> my geography is all mixed up. But, but Mr. Mayor, the, the Ray Fitton Award for Park Innovation has been awarded to the Talabudra Creek Tourist Park. Uh, the attendees in the evening were Tim and Tanya Pearson, Scott Eastdown, and Adrian and Casey Eastdown. Again, our park managers, general manager, and park contractors. Um, Mr. Mayor, the Ray Fitton Award recognises or is named after someone who is not just a life member of the Caravan Parks Association of Queensland, but a true industry icon. He was an innovator. So to, to achieve this award is to buy into that legacy, and I think something quite preciously held uh, by the award recipients today. Mr Mayor, this year our park uh, has added a live action gaming system combining technology, entertainment and recreation that importantly meets all ages. Uh, it's an innovative system that offers a twist on laser tag gaming and uses advanced infrared technology to track and record hits. Certainly what you wouldn't expect to happen in a tourist park, but is being delivered right here on the Gold Coast. Mr Mayor, implementing this new game provided the park with an opportunity to attract a wider range of guests, which in turn helped increase the park's revenue, gets this, by 16.8% in revenue, that foresight. Mr Mayor, in the past 12 months that was achieved and they attracted over 650 participants in just six months. Well done to that team too. A bit of Star Wars on the Gold Coast. <laughs> Mr Mayor, uh, you of all people know, we all have an obligation to represent the whole of the city and it's difficult to pick favourites, but uh, it gives me great pleasure, Mr Mayor, to announce that the winner of the Environmental Award was in fact the Burley Beach Tourist Park. And Mr Mayor, the purpose of this award is 
to recognise those parks which have pursued an environmental initiative that's achieved big results, whether big or small. Not the results, but the project. Mr Mayor, the award is presented to a park that has implemented an initiative within their business within the last two years, which has had a significant and positive impact on their business, their guests, but importantly, their local environment. The Burley Beach Tourist Park implemented an environmental education garden, a project promoting sustainability through education. So guests arrived, they were equipped with green skills and they could take those skills with them back home. They wanted their guests to have a different and meaningful experience by developing an opportunity to learn about sustainable practices, at the same time enjoying one of the most sustainable cities, if not the most sustainable uh, in Australia, Mr Mayor. In a small way, this tourist park team are working towards a really important UNESCO goal, one that we can all believe in, and that's keeping our city clean and green and open for future generations. So well done to that team too. So with Scott Berryman and Matthew Nichols, who are park contractors and park managers. And that's in the south. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, councillors, we go to the next item, council uh, item ten. I'll go to Councillor Gates. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I rise to seek council's approval um, to participate in a meeting. Um, with a consultant who donated funds to my 2014 and 15 campaigns and also in 16, but it was refunded in full. And, Mr Mayor, the uh, approach was made when Councillor Caldwell was absent from Council and in my role as Deputy Chair. Uh, I'm not sure that the meeting will still be required now that Councillor Hamill has been appointed as the Chair, but I seek Council's... Um, permission to be involved should it be required to meet with the planning consultant in relation to number 62 Cotlew Street, Ashmore. Uh, the declaration that I make is in relation to receipt of donations from UPS and I um, seek Council's permission to meet with the consultant. Okay. Councillor Hamill. Um. Mr Mayor, I'd be happy to move um, something along the lines of that the conflict of interest is minor remote in nature and that the public interest is better served by the Deputy Mayor being involved and being able to take this meeting. Okay. Um, Maybe there's some more finesse words that can, can be provided. Have you got a standard one that reflect that? Seconder, Councillor Tozer. Anyone want to speak against? Yes, yeah, sure. Mr Mayor, my question through you is to Councillor Patterson, the area councillor. Just wondering if she's been approached by the consultant and asked to attend a meeting. Please. <coughs> Councillor Patterson. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. It's to my knowledge that I haven't. I, I could double check with my office, but I don't believe so, no. OK. All right. Um, put the motion to you. All in favour, show your hands. 
Mayor Tate, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Hemel, Councillor Peter Young, Councillor Patterson, Councillor Baden Lomsden, mm -hmm. Councillor Castro, Councillor Tozer, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Vorstow, Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor McDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. Against? No, and please put down. Councillor Gay uh, did not vote. Motion carried. Councillor, we'll go to 11.1. Lifestyle Community, the award-winning committee. No. Uh, Councillor Vorster. Hey, thank you, Mr Mayor. If we're not about lifestyle and community, I'm not sure what we're doing in this chamber. Um, Mr Mayor, I move that the report of the Lifestyle and Community Committee meeting held on Tuesday the 11th of July, covered by recommendations one through five, be received. Thank Second, uh, Councillor Bowen Lumsden, put the motion to you. All in favour, show of hands. Against? Motion carried. Any items you wish to deal separately, councillors? Councillor Vorstar. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I move that the recommendations of the Lifestyle and Community Committee be adopted. Thank you. Second there, Councillor Beldam Lumsden. Anyone speak against? Put the motion to you. All in favour, show of hands. Against. Carried unanimous. Thank you, Director. Thank you. 11.2, Planning and Environment Committee, Councillor Hamill. Uh, Mr Mayor, I move that the report of the Planning and Environment Committee meeting held on Thursday the 13th of July 2023, covered by recommendations 1 to 7, be received. Seconder, Councillor Gates, put the motion to you. All in favour, our hands. Against. Against. Motion carried. Right. Um, On this one, I'll be declaring, I'm just looking at, I'll be declaring 6.2, but we might just go down the list. Okay, 6.1, Councillor Gates. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'll be leaving the room for items 6.1 and 6.6. Um, I right. presume I need to make the declaration separately and in order, but for 6.1, um, I have two declarations, one receipt of donations from UPS in 2014, $1,850, and in 2016, 1850 refunded in full, and also receipt of donations from the applicant LV Properties in 2014, $975, in 2015, $1,250, uh, and another $150. 95 separately, and in 2016, 1500 from LB Properties. So I'll be leaving the room for item 6.1. Okay. Do you wish to consider them as we go or make all I the declarations? Think, um, Councillor, if there's no objection, uh, we'll deal with 6.1, then we'll go and, and do, and then we'll deal with 6.6. Um, and so, so in presenting this, uh, we accept that you're going to be leaving when we deal with 6.1. And if you can declare the 6.6, okay, sure. and you can leave for both while we do 6.1 and 6.6. Okay, Any Ms. objection with that, Councillor Boston? Uh, sorry, Mr Mayor, I'll, I'll seek your guidance. I'm probably making a fool of myself. But my understanding is that we'll have to deal with 6.6 .6 before 6.1. Oh, because 6.6 okay. .6 has the effect of modifying 6.1. Okay. In, in, in that case, but it doesn't matter. We'll 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 take the de declaration when you leave the room. Then we'll go to six point six, okay, six point one, and then we'll go to six point two, and I leave the room. How's thank that? you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and six point six, the declaration is exactly the same and arose because there was a part left out of the initial report of six point one. So an additional item was added to address the part that was omitted by, in error by the officers. So it was um, the acceptance of donations from UPS, as is on the screen, and from John Carney and LV Properties, as previously described. With that, I'll leave the room. OK. Sorry. Councillor Hamill. Um, 
Mr. Mayor, so as Councillor Vorster raised, um, just for flow, it would be best if we could deal with 6.6 .6 first. Yes, okay. Um, there is some change. There is some wording changes um, to come into the recommendation based on some advice from officers after the committee meeting, um, which I believe our minute secretary has. Okay. Um, this was some wording that, uh, based on some questions from Councillor Vorster around ensuring that one of the main walls that could be seen on the outside of the building that we had appropriate graffiti treatment in place. So it was just some additional wording to reflect committee intent. Okay. Um, so anyone wants a seconder on this? Yeah. Councillor Vorster? So Councillor Vorster, second this motion. Um, Back to Mr. Councillor Mayor, um, Hamill. We'll, introduce, we'll have to introduce the same wording to 6.1 as well when we get to it. Um, and if it's okay with you, I'm happy to introduce the wording, but I might defer to Councillor O'Neill as area councillor to speak to it. Okay. And seconder is Councillor Vorster. And that's the words you're talking about? Okay. And to open the debate, Councillor Hamill yields to Councillor Gail O'Neill. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, um, as per committee, I was very happy to speak on this um, particular item. Uh, we now have a, uh, a recommendation for approval for some short-term accommodation in the centre zone of Coolangatta. Probably the first time in over a decade that we've actually had something come to council to be approved with short-term accommodation. It's greatly needed in our area. The uh, developer has worked closely with council planners in making sure that the, the building form and the outcome has been great with increased setbacks and decreasing two storeys in height. Um, and I will go on record as saying that I would like to see a lot of developers, especially in the, in the centre zone area, just really take notice of what is appropriate for, the, for their site. And this developer certainly has, and I'm very happy to, um, to put this forward. Thank you. OK. Anyone speak against? Then, uh, Councillor Hamill, do you want to close? Um, Mr Mayor, only to echo some, uh, some of Councillor O'Neill's points around um, on this site, we've seen a lot of negotiations between the applicant and officers, um, a reduction in height, an increase in setbacks, improvements to built form outcomes. Um, so very proud to see this building happening. And um, Councillor Neil's correct, it's the first building with um, short-term accommodation approval in nearly a decade to Coolangatta. Um, so it gives the applicant both choices of it either being for people to live in as um, normal dwellings, um, but also gives the flexibility to increase our tourism offering um, in the deep south of our city. Um, so great outcome for Cool and Gatter. Um, really great outcome for Cool and Gatter and can't wait to see this one built. Councillors, the debate's closed. Put motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against, carry, unanimous. We'll go to 6.1, Councillor Hamill. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So in 6.1, we'll just have to in introduce the exact same words again, um, just to make sure that 6.1 and 6.6 Align perfectly. And second, uh, Councillor Vorsa, are you happy with that? Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Very happy. Okay. And you want to yield to Councillor O'Neill? Uh, don't. Do you want to second go again? No, we're <laughs> good. good. The debates, anyone speak against? The debate's closed. Put the motion to you all in favour. Show of hands. Against, motion carry. Unanimous. Please recall Councillor Gates. Okay, councillors, we'll go to 6.2, it's the next item in line. Uh, councillors, I have a prescribed conflict of interest declaration. You can get it on the screen, then I'll speak to I'll declare it. Yeah, there's no hurry. <coughs> okay. Okay. 
Well, councillors, uh, I'm a director and shareholder of a company that part owns the land that is subject to the applicant application at lot two, uh, BUP 89137 Remembrance Drive, Service Paradise. Uh, the name of the company is Creston, director shareholder, and uh, the company is part owner of the land in surface and, um, and has provided lease o over the land to the applicant of, the, of this leaving the room. Um, you got a question? Uh, yes, Mr Mayor, uh, you described it as being the land. It, it's actually the unit, isn't it? Yeah, lot two, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, wouldn't unit. it be better described as being the, the unit as yes. opposed to the land? Okay, part owner of the unit, please. Thank you very much. <coughs> We're good? <laughs> Councillor Gates, I invite you to take my chair. Thank you. Councillor Taylor, we'll go to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just writing to um, declare a conflict of interest in relation to this matter. Uh, Daisha Fire System, which I'm a, I am provide service as management advice, holds a current contract with Surface Plaza Resort Body Corporate. Surface Plaza Resort Body Corporate has an indirect interest in the outcome of the matter, but a reasonable person may perceive that I have conflict between my, my personal interests and the matter to the public interest. Um, our company has also been mentioned in a couple of uh, articles, so um, in this case, instance, I'd like to leave the room. Thank you. I just have one question before you go through to the CEO. Is it a prescribed interest or a declarable? And, and I presume Day Shelf received income from those reports, so I would have thought prescribed. Um, in my assessment, it's a declarable conflict of interest because the contract isn't directly with council, which is the requirement under the PCOI. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. This is a more arm's length transaction. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <coughs> So, councillors, we'll go to 6.2. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Owen Jones. Uh, so, I do have a question, um, and it was just in regards to I think most councillors have received an email uh, since the committee meeting where it was indicated that a significant amount of funds had been committed to the project to date, some $900,000. And I was through you to the officers, are we aware of? whether or not any of those funds are involved, the actual physical completion of any works within the tenancy. Thanks, Director. Through you, Madam Chair. Not to my awareness, but I'd have to check. I think Mick's just on his way out, so he might be able to respond to that further if, if he's aware of anything. Uh, through you. Madam Deputy Mayor, uh, we had um, some inquiries come in recently, as Councillor Owen Jones said. Um, to the best of my knowledge, and I've checked with development compliance, we don't actually have any complaints um, for illegal building works other than the recent ones, so we haven't had our compliance officers go out and investigate at this point in time. Um, during the course of the assessment, our planning officers went out on site. They did observe that there were some demolition works happening to kind of strip out some of the old bowls club um, internal facilities, but that's the extent of it. We don't believe there's been any works to date to try and facilitate this development. Thank you. I'll go to Councillor Hamill, then Councillor Young and Councillor Tozer. Um, thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Through you to the manager, uh, there's been some discussion in the media and, and via some emails um, from residents of the building above in regards to owner's consent. Um, for the benefit of all councillors um, and the stream, could you confirm that um, owner's consent for this application was given and was verified by officers? 
Uh, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, when the application was lodged, our officers did um, have evidence that the body corporate had given consent. Um, so that was taken on face value. That was evidence with the body corporate uh, seal of approval. Uh, Councillor Young. Uh, thank you, Acting Chair. <clears throat> My question follows on from the um, question from Councillor Owen Jones in regard to the building work. I also received an email from some residents. I thought it was only addressed to me, but it seems apparent other councillors have received it. And this person had approached me as their council representative, and I indicated to that person I'm not, and referred them to Councillor Taylor, who I obviously understand now is conflicted here, um, so I presume no request has been made to development compliance. So my question is, uh, you may want to take this on notice through you, Acting Mayor, that um, development compliance is asked to uh, investigate these allegations of work occurring on the site. Is that something that can be progressed? Uh, yeah, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor. We also received a separate uh, councillor request yesterday as well, so development compliance will treat it as a, as a matter now to investigate. Councillor Tozer. <laughs> Thank you, um, uh, Madam Chair. Um, my question actually relates to the committee recommendation, which I've had a chance to look through in the minutes, and then the email correspondence that's come to us. And without wanting to draw this out for longer than I need to, I, I would love some clarity through you from the manager about the email advice that appeared to um, ch challenge the committee recommendation, particularly one and two. Um, could, could we have some information about that on the record? Or, or some more clarity around that? I mean, I read the email, but I don't quite understand it fully. So. <coughs> Uh, yeah, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, at, at the committee meeting, um, the committee um, obviously resolved to decide this application in a different way or recommend it with a recommendation for refusal. Um, during the discussion at the committee meeting, um, there were requests for officers to scrutinise the reasons for refusal. Um, so that's what we've done and reported back through the memo to all the councillors. Um, in officers' opinion, reasons one and two um, um, and not something that we could recommend we use to support the application. Our, our recommendation remains as per the, the committee recommendation. Um, if the council has a different view, those reasons as they're drafted um, are in the right format, I guess, if I could use that word for a decision notice. So they, they could be the reasons. It's just not something we would recommend. Um, and then the other part, just while I'm here, the um, reason three, which related to the fire safety, um, we don't believe that is actually a valid reason to use in a refusal, simply because that matter's dealt with through other, other legislation and another jurisdiction. So, through you, Madam Chair, um, I actually understood the number the, the three. Number three, it, it occurs to me that the, the fire safety isn't you know something that we can consider when we're assessing a planning application. But one and two seemed like the words that were used in the committee recommendation seemed quite clear. Um, the proposed density vastly exceeds the city plan, city plan map density overall outcome, and, and it quotes the, the the outcome in the in the plan. Does it or does it not exceed the mapped density? Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, um, I guess what we're trying to say in that memorandum was that um, while the reasons themselves, as I said, can be used in a decision notice, um, our recommendation simply remains as the professional officer recommendation that was put into the committee report. So um, if the, the council still wants to use those reasons, that's, that's entirely up to the council. But as officers, our recommendation is that, as per the original committee report, that it, the application should be approved. So just so I've got it very clear, what you're saying is that the proposal does exceed the city plan's map density, but the nature of the application, because we have a performance-based planning scheme, lends you to recommending approval despite that? Through Deputy Mayor, more or less, that's have a difference of opinion, I suppose. Right. I mean, that seems, it seems strange with one and two, but um, yeah, I'm just going to sit for now unless there's see some other questions. I'm still trying to work out that email and how Thank it works. Thank you. I'll go to Councillor Vorster and then Councillor Pauline Young. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Just a few <coughs> questions um, through you to either the director uh, or manager. Um, would it be fair to say, having regard to the report that was provided, that officers found their way to approving the development, taking all things on balance and holding them in tension? Uh, through you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, uh, yeah, that, that is essentially what we've done and that's why we've recommended to the Council that the application be approved. Right, so, uh, Madam Chair, I suppose, ref and I will come to another question, but just reflecting on um, Councillor Toza's line of argument, it appears as though um, we have an officer report that is prepared to look at many separate points on balance and intention and not rely on any single point, whereas we've got a suggestion that we should extract some grounds for approval and have it hinge only on one matter rather than holding everything on balance and intention. Um, so my, my question is through you to, uh, I suppose, the manager, uh, Madam Chair, is um, should, should a decision to refuse this application be appealed, would the court not have the purview, either through the court itself, court proper, or through an ADR process, to narrow the scope of the appeal to exclude matters that they feel aren't germane? Do you want to... S uh, look, I'm happy for the the officer to answer it, but I would also just caution counsel generally about asking an officer to try to interpret what an independent body of Queensland government is going to do. So all right, so happy. All right, I so think you're very close, but I yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, thank you um, through you, Madam Chair, to the CEO. In my experience, having sat through many ADR processes, our grounds of refusal are often narrowed before we get to the nub of an ADR process. And the court, in my experience, has often chosen to narrow its focus when deciding a matter, because what they tend to do is throw out council's assessment and begin afresh, unless I'm wrong. Um, so my question is, does it necessarily do any harm to council's position at any appeal to include more matters to form the basis for refusal than to narrow it to possibly only one. Through you, Madam Deputy Mayor. So if, if the decision of the council does get appealed and we end up in the court, um, there is a process to go through before you get to a hearing. Um, and in that process, um, the city as a model litigant would have to, um, you know, take proper advice from legal professionals and um, proceed on a, on a basis that it's, you know, is defensible. So um, there would, I can't give a specific on where it would end up, but there would be a process to go through, um, and it is possible that some of those reasons for refusal would would narrow or fall away. Right. So, um, Madam Acting, oh, sorry, Madam Chair, I suppose then. To clarify my thinking following my two questions, it appears as though there is no inherent detriment to Council's potential argument for refusal to include all of the grounds that the democratically elected representatives relied on in their own thinking in the decision. There is no detriment and that there will be a further process that could narrow the scope down to those that are absolutely germane, captured by the Planning Act and acceptable to the court. So I'm going to sit down now. I only wanted to volunteer that in case I got that hopelessly wrong and, and somebody else could correct me. Thank you. Councillor Toza. And, and thank you, um, Acting Chair. Um, I just had, um, and my apologies if this has been asked, I was um, um, absent for the uh, planning meeting. So. Um, is the I'm through you to to make is the um, provision of car parking for um, I noted that this it was code accessible is the provision of car parking um, does it have a, a a rate for a backpackers? 
Uh, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor, there's not a, a very neat or clean rate. Um, so the, the city plan does have a, a rate for short-term accommodation, but it is based on bedrooms. And because this is a hostel without bedrooms, it's not, there's not, a, I guess, a very clear rate of car parking. Second question. Yeah, and sure. Thank you through the through the chair again. Um, with um, and I, my understanding is we've got a couple of other backpackers in Surface Paradise. Is there um, are they conditioned to provide car park in their approvals? And um, if not, is there a, a demand for car parking coming out of either of those that would impact on the rest of the city? Um, through you, Deputy Mayor, there, uh, there are some other approvals in Surface Paradise. The most recent one that was approved in 2020, I believe, didn't have any car parking um, spaces required to be provided. Um, I also, while this correspondence has been coming in over the last week, checked with development compliance. We haven't actually received any complaints from the general community about backpackers parking um, in and around that facility. So. It didn't require any parking and it seems to be operating okay. Um, thank you for that. That was my actually my third question was, you know, was, had there been any complaints in the past 10 years or whatever to, um, to, uh, that the city would need to address? So thank you. Thank you. I'll go back to Councillor Toza. I'm interested in, um, on page 300 of the agenda, it talks about the staffing and it, it, the application is for 270 beds for the backpackers and it says that there's one manager and two housekeepers and one receptionist are the staff that will manage this facility of 270 people. Where, first question is where, where, do, where are those four staff members going to park? Through you Madam Deputy Mayor, there's no car parking provided as part of this proposal, so those staff would be parking either on the street or in a, a paid public car park nearby. Nearby. Right. And if there's 270 rooms in peak season occupied, or 270 beds occupied, and it takes 10 minutes, say for instance, to clean those beds if everyone checks out, that's 45 hours of cleaning. Is this a realistic expectation for staffing? I don't know what we're measuring it against. Is it realistic? I mean, the application is what it is, but it's important for us to assess it realistically. I don't know where to go with this question. <laughs> um, look, I think in general terms, we assess the, the applications on their merits, and I'm not... I don't think city officers can speak specifically about the running of a hostel, but there are multiple methods for, for, how, they, for how they could staff that. So that, I think I, I've read, I read the papers like everyone else. I mean, they're, they're the permanent staff. That's not to say that there wouldn't be contract staff coming into the building, and that should be factored into the decision-making. Right. I'm just trying to make a... Across the I, range I appreciate that the, the, that the city plan... Cleaners. That the city plan doesn't necessarily allow for or the necessity of car parking for short-term accommodation uses. I kind of get that. They're travelling in and out. They're backpackers. They probably don't have a car. I get that. But it occurs to me we do actually have to view the application in the context of the staff who are going to be serving those people. And, yeah, I, yeah I'm, that answers my question. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Tozer. Councillor Owen Jones, back to uh, you. Th thank you, Councillor Gates. Um, you mentioned through you to Mick, you mentioned an uh, approval in 2020. Um, how many beds was that for? And was it in, in an existing building where car parking had been potentially allocated to a lot? Uh, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor, that was the building. Um, it's on Surface Paradise Boulevard, kind of between the, the Clock Tower Hotel and the Cypress Avenue car park in that section of Surface. Um, it was an old commercial building, um, and I don't believe... Um, I'll probably have to take it on notice. I don't believe that um, because there was no car parking requirement as part of the conditions for that approval, um, I don't believe there are any sort of allocated spaces either. If that answered your question, I'm sorry, but I'd have yeah. to take... Uh, look, like, I mean, the notice. challenge I think that we have is in some of these older buildings, um, the body corporate can either have car parking allocated specifically attached to a lot or they can not be attached at all to the lot. And 
Um, so the retrofitting of approvals into existing old stock um, sometimes comes with existing car parking that's in a pool and sometimes doesn't. So I suppose that's what I was trying to get, get a handle off in the context of anchoring something back to a 2020 approval. So in Central Surface Paradise, clearly we have some 1970s and 80s high-rises that have ground floor um, uh, former restaurants that now no longer operate and may be vacant. And I think that uh, it was, it's probably not the intent of the, of the Planning Act to allow uh, residential accommodation to happen in those areas. Um, uh, so Horizon, Georges, uh, at the Peninsula, um, there's, there's lots of 1970s and 80s uh, uh, lots that potentially could also um, be used for this type of use, but they may have car parking attached to them because of the original approvals. This, this one, we don't have any car parking attached to it because of the way that the car parking has been um, acquired and disposed in the last uh, couple of decades. Thank you. Councillor Hamill. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Through you to Mick. Um, you've mentioned <clears throat> the approval in 2020. Um, this is in the correspondence you set out, but there is a second site in Surface Paradise that has a similar approval. Um, would you clarify for me that both of the approved hostel sites in your correspondence, that at neither site um, car parking was a condition of approval? Uh, through you, Madam Deputy Mayor, I'm not, sorry, Council, I'm not aware of the other, the specifics of the other application or the other approval. Um, definitely aware of the 3298 Surface Paradise Boulevard has no car parking, um, but I'd have to, I'm sorry, I'd have to take the other one on notice just to double check that car parking. Um, Madam Deputy Mayor, in regards to the density, um, could Mick confirm that the density proposed with this application is um, similar, if not the same, to the approved application in 2020? Three, Madam Deputy Mayor, um, just to clarify, um, the same as the, uh, the other yeah. approval. <laughs> yeah. uh, the other approval was for 100, 100 odd um, um, beds. Um, this one's 270, so the, the density is a little higher in this application, but through our, the officer's assessment report, all the requirements for density were considered, um, including infrastructure provision, um, proximity to services, those sort of things. Okay, councillors, are there any more questions? Councillor Young. A motion? Deputy Mayor, um, I would like to move the committee recommendation with the exclusion of number three, so the deletion of number three. So, or it isn't numbered there, so just the first two dot points. Okay, is there a seconder for that motion? Awesome. Seconded, Councillor Tozer. Uh, did you have a question, Councillor um, Foster? No, Madam Chair, but I'll... We'll I'm not sure if it's appropriate at this stage, but I want to foreshadow the actual committee recommendation because I've got a, a lived experience with the Varsity Lakes retirement home decision, which raised um, safety concerns for vulnerable people. And I personally believe that we shouldn't be prematurely excluding that from our case because um, it, it, the, the more conservative view prevailed in my experience. Councillor Young, would you like to... Uh rethink your motion or would you prefer okay accept that thank Thanks, you Chair. and councillor toza as a seconder okay um, so would i'll just like... rise to speak to that yes yeah, sure. thank you um, and i appreciate the suggestion of councillor borsa there i when i read this matter i look i have great regard for the officers and the professional advice that they provide to us it's absolutely first class and we're very much benefited from the expertise that we do have amongst our planning officers. And so um, when I read these documents, I always have to try to factor in their sol solid and sound arguments against the way I may really feel about a particular proposal. In this one, the thing I couldn't get over was the fact that the issue of fire management is not mentioned in the report at all. And that's why I sought to include it in the first instance, and I'm happy to reinforce that today, because um, the safety of human beings is our ultimate responsibility. And if I'm part of a decision whereby 
I'm well, where I feel I'm putting people at risk and ultimately they are at risk, then I would never forgive myself. So it's a very personal thing which can't be explained in a, in a legal sense, but it's, it's a very heartfelt and genuine um, concern of mine. Um, and that's been exacerbated by the receipt of a report which I don't believe I should have and I won't reference it in detail, but I think we may all have received this report which was attached to the email from the residents. It's, it's in fact prepared by Dayshell Fire Systems and it addresses fire safety provisions in the existing building, uh, which, and it's a, a page after page of I think we all um, deficiencies, the which is of great concern. So those are not related to this part of the building, but in my thinking, the, this part of the building that we're dealing with will use these or some of these fire provisions for its residents and I see some big problems. But they were not, I wasn't aware of that when we discussed this at committee. Um, so the two first reasons that density I think is a relevant thing and the officers have argued um, in the report quite adequately how they believe the uh, increased density is overcome by other provisions, the design and um, the housing needs and so on. But fundamentally, um, we're dealing with uh, a, a land use that is not defined. Backpackers isn't defined in the regulations, so we have to rely upon what is defined and that's short-term accommodation. And for normal short-term accommodation, we would require um, a certain density and in this case we are double what the density is allocated in the city plan. So that's taking into account the existing residential element of that building and this proposed 270 beds, it puts us at one bed per six square metres and the city plan identifies a residential density of one bed per 13 square metres. So it clearly is above the density so therefore the, the officers have argued well, these other factors come into play, but in my opinion, not, su not sufficiently enough to overwhelm that significant increase in the density, which I've described in the recommendation as vastly exceeding. The second issue is the proposed uh, non-provision of car parking, and um, the report addresses that in detail. It says there's very little um, on-street car parking available, so there will be a reliance on the Bruce Bishop car park. We know the history of that particular car park and the vulnerability of it being retained as a public asset or a car park at all. And in fact, Council's most previous decision about Bruce Bishop Car Park and Transit Centre was to revisit that in, with the new Council in 2024. We don't know and we can't preclude what their decision might be. But this proposal with the approval seeks to rely entirely upon the car parking in the Bruce Bishop public car park. And I think that's a deficiency. Um, it could be argued that that provision will last forever. I, I really don't think it will be forever. And whereas this land use, we don't have any say on the duration of it. Relating to, um, well, there has been discussion at committee and, and today about other backpackers in the, in the general area. And one of those mentioned on, at the committee was a place called Tequila Sunrise. I'll just say I, I have complete understanding of the need for these sorts of facilities for young people in particular. I've got no problem with if that if that's what they choose, they want to be in a pod and it's cheap, that's great. But hand on heart, if the proposal for Tequila Sunrise had come to committee, I wouldn't have been supporting that either. That's been dealt with under delegated authority. I don't know if that's a good decision to delegate it and I don't know if it's a good decision to approve it. But on their own website, they say, if you are driving to the hostel, there are two parking options available. Uh, the first is limited free, free street parking is available from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. of the following morning around the Buds Beach area. The parking is free over the weekend from 12 midday onwards. The 3P means you can park a car for free for three hours and then you have to come and move it. So they're clearly indicating we're not providing car parks, but you can just use all the public car parking 
um, without paying. They've also indicated an, a second option, which is to use the Service Paradise That's Parking really Boulevard, nice. which is $5.50 per day. So in a land use where we're not anticipating any car parking, the same um, provider on their website is identifying, uh, clearly acknowledging that people will drive. They will come in cars. I mean, that's the reality of backpackers. Sorry, there. Councillor Young, can you just read what it says again about the 3P? Because yes. the 3P indicates a three-hour parking limit, not that it's free for three hours. That's what it says. I'll read this again. Well, this we've got 2P or 3P. Isn't... Is, does... So... OK. It's regulated by the time or time and metres. So OK. Thank you. Do you want me to read it again? No, it's fine. Keep going. Okay, so this is from, from their website, and it just says, the parking is free over the weekend. The, the 3P means you can park your car for, three, for free for three hours, and then you have to come and move it. Mm -hmm. the, the, but the guts of that, it really is that, although they're not providing car parking, they're not pro proposing car parking here because it's just for backpackers, there's... But they're acknowledging there is a need. There are people that do arrive in cars, and we all know that. The young people are driving around the country. That's part of the experience. Um, so it's just unsatisfactory not to provide any car parking whatsoever, in my opinion. And, um, and the third point there, which I did briefly address, it, hand on heart, is um, a great concern to me that th there was no consideration of in the report, no mention of it, and... Um, that may, and we were told in committee that ultimately we're relying upon a private certifier to deal with all that. And where I don't have vision of that, where I don't have any control over that, I have great concern that. Sorry. Madam Deputy Mayor, can we get clarification here from Mick? Is there a condition attached to this recommendation that would have required them to get private certification for fire safety management or something like that? Uh, through you, Madam Deputy, there's no condition, but the, it's the legislation, yes. so that so trumps So, just to be very yeah. clear, the exact same requirements for the building we just approved in Coolangatta and the one we're going to talk about in Southport, the same legislation applies to both. So, let's be very careful that we haven't just said we don't have consideration of fire safety at all. We have the same consideration as we do for every application, which is that as part of an approval, those applicants will follow the state legislation for fire safety. Correct. Please proceed. Leave my argument at that, thanks. OK, Thank do I have a speaker against? Um, Madam Deputy Mayor, can I foreshadow the original officer recommendation of approval, please? Certainly. Would you like to speak against the motion before us? Um, I will, Madam Deputy Mayor. Um, so first of all, because I don't think point three should have remained um, as part of a refusal. Um, private certification of a multitude of things as part of any building approval um, is what happens everywhere. For the building we just approved in Cool and Gatter, it would be the same thing. We rely upon a private uh, certification of the fire safety in that building. Um, that's the legislation in Queensland. That's the process we follow for every building we approve. I don't believe there's a need for point three on this one or for that to be a concern. Um, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, we have two other hostels backpacker accommodation set up in Surface Paradise that are dead similar to this. Same level of density and don't have car parking either. They both rely upon on-street car parking or use of public car parking. Um, while I appreciate that city plan isn't perfect in giving exact car parking ratios or exact densities for backpackers in short-term accommodation, that's not an uncommon thing. And in those circumstances, we rely upon the performance outcomes and the strategic framework um, and the review of that by officers in coming to our consideration if something should be approved or refused. Um, given we have two other sites in Service Paradise that are exactly the same as what is proposed here, bunk bed accommodation, nearly the same density within a couple of square metres of the same density, and neither of them have um, car parking attached either for staff or for people visiting, I just don't know how we can pick out this one and decide this is the one we're going to refuse. Um, there's two other existing. I think we have to be fair that um, this has been considered by officers. They've taken all of that on board um, and come to a conclusion that um, they've been able to come to approval for this one. So um, I won't be supporting Councillor Young's um, refusal um, and we'll see how we go with the full shadowed motion later on. Thank you. 
Do I have a, another speaker for the motion? Councillor Toza. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on page 305 of the agenda, it talks about the car parking provisions um, and as they were assessed. And it, it talks about, um, in accordance with acceptable outcome AO1 of the Transport Code, the development must provide 270 spaces, one space per room. Um, however, it should be noted that the Transport Code does not account for dormitory style accommodation types, such as backpackers accommodation. And by nature, this use typically generates uh, a lower demand for car parking than other types of short-term accommodation. And so it is quite ridiculous to suggest that this um, development application should provide 270 car parks. I can see how that would be silly. Um, but what I think is equally silly is the idea that it should provide none. Um, the words of the officers here are, is pretty clear. This use typically generates a lower demand for car parking than other types of short-term accommodation. And um, you know, it goes on to say, to determine the car parking demand for the proposal, the applicant's traffic consultant has undertaken a transport mode survey. There's been a survey and it's determined at the very least there should be 10 car parks. And, and the officers have made a judgment call in providing their advice to us that that could be on-street car parking. And we've seen in the Tequila Sunrise um, excerpt from the website that they're effectively referring, they very like accommodation elsewhere, is referring people to on-street car parking that's three hours. But I just think it's ridiculous that the, the application very clearly says that people will be operating on site as staff between, I think it says 6am in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. Sorry, I'll just double check that. 8am in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. And it's going to be 24 hours, seven days manned, to, uh, uh, not manned, but, but uh, staffed. Um, you know, these, these sort of provisions, notwithstanding my personal view that four staff is ridiculously understaffed for 270 patrons, having worked in the hotel industry in a large 220 room facility in Canberra for multiple years, managing these sort of events and, uh, you know, travellers, I just, I can't see how that would be reasonable. I think that the draw on car parking, while not 270 spaces, will definitely be at least 10. Um, and it's, you know, I think Councillor Young's points were well made in relation to the Bruce Bishop car park and its future. Um, whilst I really like the idea of us providing new accommodation product in the city, uh, I can't support the accommodation, uh, the, the application in its current form. Um, I think it would make practical sense for them to come up with a suitable solution that does make sense, that doesn't involve public car parking for their private operation. Um, and frankly, I hope councillors just send a message to say we should refuse this application. This person hasn't done the necessary work to accommodate what they need to in order to operate their commercial enterprise. Thank you, Councillor Toza. Are there any other speakers um, against? No? In that case, would you like to close debate? Thanks, Deputy Mayor. I'll just start by asking the Minute Secretary to remove the word changed in the first line there. So it's just the committee recommendation. Uh, thank you. And um, I think Councillor Toza's articulated the points well there that about the car parking. Uh, Clearly, we can see that there would be a need ordinarily. Uh, clearly, clearly, we can see that there's been no provision whatsoever and a reliance upon public car parking, and to me, that's an unacceptable outcome. Um, similarly, with the, the density, uh, where we're seeking to accommodate a very great number of people in this facility and for uncertain amounts of time. Um, again, noting the... Um, Tequila Sunrise, they very deliberately and expressly put out a call for people who may want to stay long term, like a year, not for short term, which I believe is generally meant to be three months under the legislation. You'd think, well, it's pretty unlikely someone's going to be in a place like this for three months. But they are expressly inviting people who are um, on working holiday visas and that sort of thing to stay for a year or read again from there website. To Kill a Sunrise is committed to providing affordable accommodation options to students and working holiday visa holders. We understand the financial challenges and blah, blah, blah. We strive to make your stay with us as cost effective as possible. Our long term pricing offers significant discounts compared to shorter stays. And this is all in the context of a very long duration. They talk about um, a few months or an entire ac academic year. So I don't know how that conflict, how that uh, um, coincides with their current approval, which is for short-term accommodation. I doubt that they've really got the approval to accommodate someone for a year, but they're certainly promoting that outcome. And I would imagine the same thing might occur in this site, and that's unacceptable. Thank you. 
Thank you. We'll take the vote. All in favour? Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Peter Young, Councillor Patterson, Councillor Toza, Councillor Vorster, Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor MacDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. And those against? Councillor Gates, Councillor Hemmel, Councillor Baden Lumsden, and Councillor Castro. That is carried. And uh, we'll invite the Mayor back in.
Gates, do you, do you want to go to 6.4? That'd be great, Mr Mayor, if, um, if you're ready to do that. I don't have any on 6.3. I don't know whether you want to do that first. Um, OK. 6.3? Yeah, all right, 6.3. Um, Councillor Hamill. Um, thank you again, Mr Mayor. Um, we do have some additional words to add into the committee recommendation on this one as well. Um, so, again... Uh, if we can introduce those words in, and um, I believe Councillor Patterson would like to move and speak to this one, so I'm happy to let her have that. OK, so move, Councillor Patterson. I'm happy to second. Second, uh, Councillor Hamill. With those additional words. Mr Mayor, um, at committee there was much consideration of this development which is in a very uh, unique position. To its north, just on the other side of the street, is the PDA Garden Precinct. To its east, just on the other side of the street, is Low Residential. So it's captured itself in a, in a place where it's, um, it does the city plan looks to have medium residential here, but it is a very new development for the city. So the, there has been a lot of interest from the community on this. I do want to speak particularly to one change that was made from the committee, particularly around the, um, the retention of the tree. So the, if you see in 13A, the key language change is that the tree is to be retained at all times. So that means in perpetuity. perpetuity. Not only does this tree require um, complete protection during construction and a bond be held for 12 months afterwards, but that it would also, at any time, if there is uh, intended damage on it, uh, we can take force. OK. Um, and he's want to speak against? Councillor Hamill. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, we will have trees. Um, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to speak to this one quickly as well. Um, as a city, we have a target for 2041 to deliver 160,000 additional dwellings, and a significant proportion of those dwellings need to be in our infill consolidation area, and they need to be in what is commonly known as the missing middle, which is that 8 to 12 storey unit development. Um, at committee, I spoke to the fact that, it, in my opinion, and I think it was shared by other committee members, that um, this building in this location with this built form outcome and the landscaping outcome is a really prime example of what that missing middle looks like and how we can deliver high-quality dwellings in our um, medium residential areas um, to meet that dwelling supply while still having great respect for the heritage and identity of that area. Um, the fact we'll see the protection of these trees, which I think when you see the renders really do add a lot to the site, um, sets a really clear vision for officers and for future applicants of what we're looking for as a mix in enforce that local identity and the future local identity um, and continue to focus on delivering high quality building stock in these medium residential areas. I see. All right, anyone to speak against? No, then I'll go to Councillor Patterson to close. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I first want to acknowledge the officers for the considerable work they did, recognising how precious this area is to our residents. First of all, to our manager meeting with over 80 of our residents in a forum, answering all of their questions for hours and effectively taking them on the journey of recognising what the city plan does intend for that area. I would note that this, because it was going above the targeted height, it did need to meet some conditions of strategic outcomes. And no less than 50% of those outcomes, four out of eight, were related to the integral value of the Moreton Bay fig that's at the front. It, I cannot overestimate how important that is to the character of the area, as the officers also recognised in their report. 
I also want to thank the City Architects team for working with the developer to get this to something that really does serve the, the, the community in terms of look and feel. And also to our traffic officers who've met with me on site and taken uh, the concerns of residents into account. So we now have actually some more yellow lines to protect safety there as well. So um, it's fair to say that the community would prefer this not be here. They love their area as it is. It's one of the oldest areas in the city, but we also recognise that there is huge requirement for housing, affordable housing, and this delivers exactly that. We've worked to every inch to make sure that this fits in with the community as much as possible, uh, and not least the, much, the strongest bond put on a tree that this city has ever seen. We're also ensuring that they have to fence that tree completely through, the, um, through their construction period. So I think there's a message sent from council to developers that we recognise the extraordinary value of these natural assets uh, and we take it very seriously. And now with this new condition, it is protected for perpetuity. Thank you. Okay. Debate's closed, councillors. I put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against, motion carry, unanimous. 6.4, Councillor Gates. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I have two declarations in regard to the Rabina planning review. Um, the first one related to donations from Place Design, uh, $1,410 in 2011, uh, $1,850 in 2014, and in 2016, um, the amount was refunded in full. And also in regard to Rabina Projects Proprietary Limited, um, with regard to PLACE, they provided the Rabina Central Economic Role and Function Report uh, with relation to Rabina Projects, who donated $1,250 to me in 2016. Uh, they have a relationship with Rabina Land Corporation, which is mentioned within the report. Um, Mr Mayor, I seek to remain in the room because of the strategic nature of the report before us. And I just want the uh, councillors to know that I've had no contact with anyone related uh, to the report at any time uh, ever. Councillor Hamill. Um, Mr Mayor, I'd be happy to move the same conditions that I did on the previous declaration regarding this being remote and minor and the public interest being better served and... Okay, could you find that motion? Decision. Can you find that motion, please? Okay, second to Councillor Peter Young. Anyone speak against the motion? Put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Mayor Tate, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Hemel, Councillor Peter Young, Councillor Patterson, Councillor Bowden Lumsden, Councillor Castro, Councillor Tozer, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Vorstar, Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor McDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. Motion carried. Councillor Gates did not vote. We'll deal with the second one now. Councillor Hamill. Exact same wording, Mr. Mayor. Seconder, Councillor Peter Young. Anyone want to speak against? Put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Mayor Tate, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Hemel, Councillor Peter Young, Councillor Patterson, Councillor Bowden Lumsden, Councillor Castro, Councillor Tozer, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Vorstow, Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor McDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. Motion carried. Councillor Gates did not vote. Right. Um, who moved the motion in the committee? Do you want to do the same? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, move, Councillor Voss, second to Councillor Hamill. Would you like to speak on that? Uh, I had my piece at committee and stand by those comments. Thanks, okay. Mr Mayor. All right. And um, anyone speak against? Do you want anyone to speak against? <laughs> 
All right. Put, put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against, carry unanimous. <laughs> this is a classic, classic less is more, isn't it? All right. We'll go to the next one, Lene. 6.5. I'm happy to move 6.5, Mr. Mayor. No, second. Uh, second to Councillor Pity Young. Speaking against anyone? You want to close? <laughs> With motion to you. All in favour, show our hands. Against, carry. Unanimous. <clears throat> That's done with planning. Hey. Mr Mayor, we, we've dealt with all items separately, so do you need the last part from me or is that considered done? Still need it? Okay, understood. So, uh, Mr Mayor, I move that remaining recommendations of the Planning and Environment Committee be adopted. Seconder, Councillor Peter Young. The motion to you, all in favour, show of hands. Against, motion carried. Thanks, Tim. So, th thank you, Director. We now go to Water, Waste and Energy. Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I move that the report of the Water, Waste and Energy Committee meeting held on Thursday, 13th of July 2023, covered by recommendations 1 to 5, be received. Seconder, Councillor Hamill. The motion to you, all in favour, show of hands. Against, a motion carried. Any items you want to deal separately, Councillor Tozer? Uh, Mr Mayor, I've just noticed that Councillor Hamill isn't noted on the attendance of Water and Waste and Energy or as a member on page three of the minutes. Oh, there's an apology that day. Ah, that's why. My bad. Sorry. Sorry about that. OK. Any, any other items you want to deal separately? Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I move that the recommendations of the Water, Waste and Energy Committee be adopted. Second, uh, Councillor Hamill. Put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against, motion carried. Thank you, Director. Governance, Administration, Finance, Councillor Owen Jones. Uh, Mr Mayor, I move the report of the Governance and Administration Finance Committee meeting held on Tuesday the 18th of July, covered by recommendations 1 to 5 be received. Second, uh, Councillor Patterson. All in favour, show hands. Against, motion carried. Um, any items you wish to deal separately? Councillor Jones? Uh, Mr Mayor, I, I move the recommendations of the Government's Administration Finance Committee be adopted. Councillor Patterson, you want a second? Seconder. Put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against. Carry it. Unanimous. Thank you, Director. Beat that, Bob. Economic Tourism and Events. Councillor Castro. Yeah, I can put the microphone on, which is very unlike me. I like microphones. So. <laughs> Mr Mayor, I move the report of the Economy, Tourism and Events Committee meeting held on Thursday, the 18th of July 2023, covered by recommendations 1 to 3 be received. Second to Councillor Toza. Put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against. Motion carried. Any item you wish to deal separately, Councillor Peter Young? Closed item, and so I won't be specific about it. I just what number is it? Uh, 7.1, Mr Mayor, business attraction opportunity. 7.1. Um, and I appreciate the committee's consideration and recommendation. I just wonder if there will be a, a report back to council at some point to close the loop so we're confident of these sorts of outcomes being achieved. You want to talk? Yeah. I'm happy for the director to do it on his Thanks for the question. On your feet. Okay. Thanks for the question. Back through the chair. Yes, so um, the, um, up following the approval, there would be an incentive negotiated with the applicant and then we'd report back to council on the nature of the contract. Okay. Right. Well, any other items you want to do separately? We might as well do the lot in one go. Councillor Lacastra, move. Move. Second to Councillor Toza. Anyone against any of that? Put the motion to you. All in favour, show us a hand. Against, motion carries, super majority. Yeah, we did the lot, yeah. 
All good? You want me to recount? Anyone? I disagreed with 7.0. No, we moved on. We're in consideration notice motion. Anyone want to speak on that? Nil? Very good. 13, question on notice. Anyone? Councillor Tosa. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I uh, advised the council support and your office uh, earlier this week, uh, late last week actually, uh, with a question on notice I hoped that the CEO could provide a report for, so I'll just read out the wording. Yep. Um, could the CEO provide a report to councillors about the cost sharing agreement, um, known colloquially as the Blue Book, between the Department of Transport and Main Roads, TMR, and the Local Government Association of Queensland, LGAQ, with specific reference to the City of Gold Coast obligation or otherwise to undertake remedial maintenance or new capital work on or nearby existing state road infrastructure. If you're um, OK to take the question, I'll quickly explain it if you'd like, Mr Mayor. No, no, you understand the question? Great. Thank you. Mr CEO is taken on board. Thank you. 14, petition. Any petitions, anyone? Councillor Owen Jones. No, Mr Mayor, I was going to ask uh, about the Blue Book and whether or not the city was even a participant in it. So my understanding is TMR have a Blue Book, but we're not actually... I'd, and I appreciate the question, but in answering the question, I'd really like to know whether or not the city is actually even a participant in what TMR think we should do. That, that will be included in the answer. Thank you. Petitions. No petitions. Neil, 15, general business. So we do have a general business yes, we do. We do. And I'm going to Councillor Vorster. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I just want to make sure our Minute Secretary has a copy of that general business item. OK. Um, Mr. Mayor, would you like it on the screen before I yeah, I think talk so. to it? Yeah, thanks. Because um, we've got a lot of views out there. Because mm. we're on YouTube. <laughs> and hit the like button over here. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> Ring the bell. OK. Councillor uh, Vorster, please take us through. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, Mr Mayor, I'm sure many Gold Coast residents, uh, which most certainly include myself, were quite astounded to learn that the Cabinet travelled from the lofty heights of Brisbane uh, to the Gold Coast. Uh, and I know, Mr Mayor, you were very fortunate enough to have an audience uh, with the Cabinet, and we look forward to those outcomes. Uh, but, Mr Mayor, it was to anyone else a rather opaque process and an unexpected uh, occurrence. And really, the only opportunity that we had to pull back the veil was by reading a media release that was quietly uploaded by the government uh, to their ministerial statements site. And there's a media release, Mr Mayor, that was published yesterday at 11.42am. It's headed, Palaszczuk Government's Big Build Benefits Growing Gold Coast. Now, you might think that this media statement would laud the many billions of dollars that the government claimed to be pouring into our city to meet the growing needs of a growing population. Uh, but, Mr Mayor, tucked into the media release, which is quite extensive and without any real heading, and there are many headings in this media release, um, it reads as follows. So, you so have to take time finding it because it's buried here, Mr Mayor. It says here, um, the Premier also announced, I don't know where she announced it, but she announced it, a plan to develop, now get this, colleagues, a Gold Coast Community Forum. This forum will bring together residents, stakeholders and Queensland Government representatives to identify opportunities to grow the local economy and to respond to emerging priorities. An expression of interest process inviting local community representatives to become forum members will be launched in coming weeks with the first meeting to occur before the end of this year. And it goes on to say the appointed 
forum members will have opportunities to engage with each other, industry and government to make their communities an even better place to live and work. Well, Mr Mayor, I was quite astounded to read this because I thought that there already was a Gold Coast Community Forum, Gold Coast City Council. I was intrigued to hear, Mr Mayor, that the government intends to develop a shadow council or a Gold Coast voice because the good ratepayers of the city already fund our organisation to represent their priorities and their collective aspirations. It also flabbergasted me, Mr Mayor, because I do spend some time reading the Queensland Constitution, last updated in 2001, and Part 7 talks in our Constitution about providing for a democratically elected local government. So, Mr Mayor, why on earth would the government need to establish a body that does what this body does every day? And it really left me scratching my head. My dad, almost, my dad always says, never attribute to malice what can be best explained by stupidity. But I gather, Mr Mayor, that the government is guilty on both fronts. We don't need the government to export its decision-making prowess from Brisbane to the Gold Coast because I can tell you their decision-making processes don't lead to good outcomes here on the Gold Coast. But, Mr Mayor, my deep concern is that what the government would do by progressing this plan for a shadow council is to actually undermine democratic representation representation by the people for the people. And that is because, Mr Mayor, every four years, as councillors, we are held to account by our communities. Our communities sit in judgment at the ballot box and they determine whether we are rising to the occasion and giving fulfilment to their aspirations. But, Mr Mayor, when the Cabinet or the Premier handpick people who are not elected, those people are not accountable and there can be no nexus between their interests and the community's interests. Mr Mayor, I rise today to urge all of us to support this general business item because what it will do is make it very clear to the government that we do not support their usurpation or their usurping of local government here in Queensland, but also give us the opportunity to join with other local governments right across Queensland to push back against the Marxist takeover of local government here in Queensland. Mr Mayor, my motion reads as follows, that we object to the establishment of the Gold Coast Community Forum on the basis that it usurps the constitutional role of local government in Queensland, noting that forum members will be appointed by the state government and not elected or accountable to the community, and sets an undesirable precedent which may see similar forums established throughout Queensland and or for other purposes that fall within the jurisdiction of local government in Queensland. We're seeking to restate that local government is best placed to provide considered, transparent and democratic representation on behalf of communities and that the proposed Gold Coast Community Forum will be costly, confusing and prone to political rent-seeking. And we request that the Local Government Association of Queensland join with us and pursue this as a matter of urgent advocacy on behalf of local governments in Queensland. And, Mr Mayor, not only do we want to put the government on notice today, but we want to join with the industry, join with the local government industry to earn their support on the floor of conference, Mr Mayor, and that requires you writing to all councillors in Queensland, setting out our concerns and soliciting their support, Mr Mayor, at the annual meeting in October 2023, and to ensure that we have the best possible opportunity of striking back against the empire that there is... <laughs> Star Wars reference that was for you, Mr Mayor. That there is a representative appointed by the council to argue the point. Now, Mr Mayor, there are regional community forums that the state government have established, and I've had an opportunity to review their work, and it includes flying around regional and remote parts of the city, sorry, of the state, 
and visiting men's sheds. I think that we are certainly capable. We're large enough, sophisticated enough and reflective enough to be doing that work for the state government if they only chose to listen. Let's make sure that they listen. Thank yeah. you, Mr Mayor. Just on that, I just wondered also that, um, of course, they have to show term of reference, but the, the thing that I find interesting is that um, this selected committee, are they going to be in the same way as having the code of conduct that we all face? You know, that's, that's really the, the question. Otherwise, uh, you're going to have a selected committee and go, say whatever, and there's no uh, conflict of there's conflict of interest, as you know. Then, and then there's basically uh, the the local government um, uh, four points of um, uh, statutes where we comply, ethical, and all that, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think. I think uh, it'd probably be best that I ask that question also in the letter uh, for a bit of clarification. And, um, and unless anyone else got a different, uh, different thoughts on that. And I'll go from left to right since um, Councillor Gates had her hand up first. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Because I haven't read about this proposed forum, I'm wondering if I can ask through you to Councillor Borster um, if there's been any detail provided about the matters to be considered by the forum, given that perhaps they are all matters within state jurisdiction with nothing to do with local government. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Well, isn't it the problem with this government that they provide no detail whatsoever? What we do know is that they propose inviting expressions of interest and that the job of this forum is to discuss local priorities. And I think it's deeply, deeply concerning that while we prosecute the case for important transport infrastructure, for example, you might have an unelected group of community members steering the state government in another direction or giving them plausible deniability. Now, sometimes that could concern state projects, but as we know, we are victims of the state government's decisions as well on matters of planning, transport infrastructure, dare I even say it, fire ants, Mr Mayor. Yeah. All right, I'm just going from left to right. So, um, Councillor Peter Young, Thank and you Councillor Tozer, and Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, I have no knowledge whatsoever of this, and I thank Councillor Vorster for bringing it to our <coughs> attention. I do share some of his concerns, but I'm also inclined to take a less. Um, uh, a more conciliatory sort of approach to this and just try to find out exactly what is intended, what is planned, what is the scope, how would the people be selected and how would we ensure that they are accountable in a transparent way. Because the, the nearest thing that I can find in a very quick time is the regional community forums and they are expressly for the vast and diverse regions across the, the state and and the South East Queensland and Gold Coast in particular is not identified in the lists of regions that have been subject to on ongoing work for a number of years and I believe that's probably been good work and I don't want us to divorce ourselves from a good process if it exists. But I, I know nothing about this and I'm a bit inclined uh, not to support the motion on the basis that I am not well informed about it, I'm afraid. Although I understand it's well intended. If you don't know, vote no. <laughs> I've got a council tozer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I actually uh, also want to thank Councillor Vos for bringing it to my attention. I didn't have a chance to read, I don't take time to read the Premier's press releases generally, and I have just found it online here. Um, but at, at around about the time that press release came out or is dated as coming out, um, I did happen to see on social media a photo of you attending a community cabinet. Could you talk a little bit about the community cabinet that you attended yesterday and whether this issue came up or what, it, what sort of matters were discussed yeah, at that community it, it cabinet? It didn't come up. Basically, I uh, took on all of our advocacy um, uh, matters uh, at hand and aired it to all the ministers, and that included, um, of course, fire ants, light rail stage four, infrastructure towards the um, Olympics. Um, so um, the, 
waste to energy um, to see if, the, if we are doing it, whether we should build a little bit bigger so that uh, council in South East Queensland can utilise it and work out a funding model for that. Um, talked about the, uh, uh, the culture growing um, in our city, uh, the film industry advocacy, where we want um, to have a three way of um, joint funding to have, say, three studios purposely built um, to and have it quarantined for um, Queensland uh, product uh, films, and that um, that uh, the ask was uh, around 25 million, and we match fund that plus the state uh, plus the federal, so that we can do that. In, at the same time, with our tender process, with our film uh, studio, I can't get into detail there because there's probity issues. But my point is, um, there are myriads of those ad advocacy that uh, I've been asked to talk about, mm. and uh, so I table that as much as I can. Housing affordability uh, was talked about. Um, uh, bus. Um, the autonomous bus, uh, the idea to move athletes, athletes um, village to um, various stadium, and uh, the concept there is that um, the number of bus drivers, there will be a short shortage, so we should uh, explore autonomous bus um, for the Olympic Games, but if we're going to do that for the Olympic Games, let's look at uh, areas where it can work now. Um, and I spoke to him about uh, east-west connection to the light rail, uh, where we can have autonomous bus running, um, and connecting one. We've got two routes, as everyone knows, and, um, and I update them on our autonomous bus um, uh, trial along uh, Main Beach, and, um, and, and my intention is to... Uh, share information uh, with the Transport Minister, Mark Bailey, um, and the next uh, expansion of uh, our dive wreck, um, that uh, the next phase, should there be an opportunity uh, to expand the dive, um, our Wonder Reef, and the, the Deputy Premier was there. So they're the, they're the things that on a snapshot of what I tabled. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, that is a comprehensive list of things that you talked about, and it occurs to me that maybe, um, quite properly, as the spokesperson for our city, the state government and the cabinet see um, that comprehensive list of items and issues and projects that you've shared um, as reflective of some of our more, you know, our priorities as a council, which they probably are. Um, is there a way we could, as councillors, be better informed when you engage in that sort of... Like, very, yeah, not that I want to know your diary, no, Mr Mayor, but no, no, it, no. it occurs to me that maybe some it's, of these issues that Councillor no. Borster has raised might be better yeah. dealt with if we could collaborate better on that yeah. sort of feedback. I understand. Um, the invitation came in uh, less than 24 hours. Wow. Oh. So Gosh, that's frustrating. Yeah. So I have to tell you, I was up late to okay. prioritise what... Uh, advocacy has been trust upon me by council. Yes. And to be there, and uh, it was a 4 p.m. invite, I think. And uh, so less than 24 did, hours. Did, did, did my best. And, Absolutely. And to to draft all those things uh, and have it have it um, you know presented in the, in the clear and succinct way and. And uh, and try to communicate to councillors. I couldn't couldn't do it all. And I appreciate the challenges that you face when you're given such a short time frame to represent the city's interests. So I, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful of that at all. Is there when that community cabinet occurs and these sort of issues are discussed? Is there a, like a minutes of the meeting or some sort of record of the meeting that they that could be public they, and transparent? They, they, they take the minutes, uh, <laughs> and, but <laughs> they, they take all all the minutes there and and. That's wh whether it's uh, when they decide to make that public, that's their call, not, m not mine. Wow. OK. Well, thank you, Mr Mayor. And I gave you the summary there because I'm, I'm also bound by uh, Cabinet... Uh, confidentiality. Confidentiality. So I don't know if I'm going to... OIA is going to come say hello again. <laughs> I appreciate you letting us know, Mr Mayor. 
Yeah, uh, I was going left to right, so I'll go back to Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm excited about uh, Councillor Vorster reading the Constitution and ministerial releases, but I'm not necessarily excited about taking a general business item um, and voting for it because, it, to me, it, it appears to be pretty combative in regards to uh, the city working with the state government. So I think from time to time um, we say that the state government doesn't understand the Gold Coast and I think one way for them to understand the Gold Coast is actually to engage with the Gold Coast community. So through a forum probably isn't uh, the bad, a bad start. But my question to Councillor Vorster is I, I don't quite understand what he means by political rent seeking. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, Rent-seeking rent behaviour is effectively... And I'm sure you're across the definition, but... No, that's what I'm sure. So, so rent-seeking behaviour is when a political or economic actor uses uh, rules and regulation to benefit a particular party or group or sector over and above another. Uh, in economic terms, it's about securing um, super profits or above, the, uh, above average rates of return. So, for example, think about um, uh, uh, industrial relations. So, by crafting an industrial relations framework, for example, one can create higher returns for a unionised workforce, for example, than a competitive market-based workforce. Political rent-seeking refers to using the machinery of government to extract political outcomes rather than democratic outcomes. And the point here that I'm trying to make is not that we will have political rent-seeking behaviour, but we will have a system that is prone to political rent-seeking behaviour, where the government is able to, at their own discretion, appoint people to this group rather than putting them through the crucible or furnace of an election. And the risk, to my mind, is to see political appointments made to this body rather than representative appointments made. And I reflect on the behaviour of the government appointing former Labor ministers, for example, to the boards of government-owned enterprises and utilities as an example of political rent-seeking. And the caution I would put here, maybe I'll leave it to closing, but my, my caution here is that when you have an elected forum, you end up with community representation. But you will always have the temptation of political appointment when it's politicians making the choices. Thank you. Uh, Mr Mayor, I just wanted to thank Councillor Vorster for his example of political rent seeking. <laughs> Councillor Owen Jones. Councillor Peter Young. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Obviously, I've already spoken, but I found the Premier's um, announcement and um, under it there are quotes attributable attributable to Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk. And one of those is, um, this community cabinet is an opportunity to hear directly from Gold Coasters and the local council on the issue. So this is referring to the community cabinet held Monday, of which we had no notification. You had... Yesterday. Yes, which you had less than 24 hours notice. And so this says... But, no, a, no, but let's, let's get it. But uh, I know I, I said... but. No complaints. I was happy to be there. Yes. OK, so I just, I, I just want to... That was in line with answering Council Tozer that I couldn't engage with councillors as well as preparing my notes for the Cabinet. That, not, not that I'm whinging about, oh, my God, I didn't have enough time. No, I appreciate okay. that, and I appreciate that you would have represented us very well. But the, the statement is that this is the Cabinet was an opportunity to hear directly from Gold Coasters and the local council on the issues that matter most. Um, well, we had very little opportunity to provide a genuine in, input to that, apart from what you could <coughs> de determine in a short space of time. So if that's an indication of the commitment of the state to uh, this possible forum, then I'm, I'm even more concerned about it than I was originally. <laughs> but I'm not going to call it a Marxist agenda. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> anything of that nature. But I think the motion is a little strong in that it's, it, it seeks for us to approach the 
local government association and say, no, we don't want this happening. And I fear that will collapse because throughout regional Queensland, these forums do occur now. And I expect that most regional local governments are happy with that process. They're contributing to it. They're participating in it. And they will see us as a, a bleating southeast Queensland urban council that's just uh, got too much um, time on its hands. Uh, so um, I'm a bit concerned about the the motion before us for a couple of reasons. But on the same, at the same time, I'm I'm concerned about the the genuine commitment of the state government to engage with us. And I think they lost a great opportunity yesterday. And um, I think that's what we should be articulating to the state. Our disappointment about that, that cabinet um, meeting here on the Gold Coast and our ability to engage with ministers and uh, represent our community and our concern about this forum rather than going to local government association. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Councillor Patterson. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm sure that our Premier feels just as strongly about democracy as Councillor Vorster. I'm sure it's very important to her that it's elected representatives who can champion on behalf of their community. So I'm sure it was just an oversight that when she discussed the Gold Coast Community Forum, she didn't state that those representatives would of first of course, be the elected reps who um, day in, day out, represent their community, speak to everyone in their community mm -hmm. and, above all, were chosen by the community. So I would, if the wording is perhaps a little bit too strong for Councillor Owen Jones, uh, Owen Jones, sorry, um, perhaps we could do another one where we thank them for raising this idea of a community forum, and we're all very happy to represent our community on it. Thank you. Okay. Councillor McDonnell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I may have got um, um, a little bit more um, notice than what you had, but it wasn't for the community forum, it was for another event. And at that um, event, I found out about the community forum yesterday. Um, and it's interesting that at 11.42 yesterday, the press release was put out for a community forum that was being um, held yesterday. Uh, I also understand that it was held at the TAFE College at Rabina. Um, um, previously, Mr Mayor, and it has been protocol that the state government have issued uh, invitations to all the councillors and various community members. Uh, I can recall one of the events being held down at the Corumban RSL um, where uh, councillors were invited and also um, community members were invited. Um, at this ye yesterday, um, um, was it a... a um, a private meeting that you had with the ministers, or was it a, a forum type? Everyone sitting no, in the it's hall. No, it's a cabinet. It's just oh, cabinet. It's closed. So uh, yeah, but they normally have. Um, um, well, no, you were asking for, about my meeting. Yes. Yeah, I, I enter the cabinet. Right. Okay. And me and the cabinet. Um, because usually at these public forums they have a room, um, and yeah. you you have seating there with all the community mm -hmm. members and yeah. and councillors, but obviously that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm just wondering who the community members were who were invited, because uh, anyone I've spoken to um, didn't know anything about it. So it'd be nice to know yeah, um, those I, of the community who who attended. Yeah, I don't know. I just... Okay. All right. <laughs> Mr Mayor, I'm, I'm wrestling with whether to move an amendment. I, I feel like the wording of this is uh, combative. And, and, and I appreciate that's my perspective and it's very subjective. Um, but I think all of us here clearly are in the dark about what the community forums are. And maybe the first step, rather than writing such a combative resolution, is to ask for information about the community forum. Um, it appears there isn't any particular urgency. There's no date uh, spelled out in the press release, but um, we'll find out on the date. My question, my my question is, 
Well, were I to move an amendment that sought that you write not, to the I'm Premier seeking there. information about the no, community no, forum no, no. and expressing concern about the role of local government in the context of those community forums, simple as that, um, would you accept that as an amendment or is that a, is okay. that a different kind of... Yeah, let, let me ask you, 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 about the time frame. OK. Let me ask. Mr CEO, you got... No, uh, I mean... I, I... Yeah, I'd defer to the to the councillor who's put the motion up, but I think in the press release there was mention of timing. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may respond, yeah, if you um, can sit down, Councillor Tozer. Tozer. Um, Mr. Mayor, in responding to Councillor Tozer and the suggestion that this is combative, he's very perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> he is very perceptive. Of course this is combative. Oh. And, OK, I've used some colourful language today, but can I just say that the local government sector is facing quite an existential crisis here in Queensland. And we have seen the state government take over elements of our ability to plan the city and to decide development applications. And they continue to meddle in our business and they keep taking responsibility from us and removing community accountability. So when they propose to establish a shadow councillor, I want to kill this off immediately because it is it makes no sense running a parallel organisation. And I'm responding to Councillor Tosa's <laughs> question. No, no, no. No, I am, on the suggestion that it's combative, because what I want to illustrate is that it's not necessarily a bad thing to be combative when faced with such a crisis. Um, Mr Mayor, today we will consider the make... OK, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave it to closing. But, Mr Mayor, on the issue of timing, mm. the Premier has released a media release without consulting the industry, without consulting council, and I would suggest without mentioning it to you in Cabinet, although I understand you may not be able to share that with us. Um, what the media release says is that the forum will commence in the next few weeks with the first meeting to be held before the end of the year. And I think it would be unfortunate for the government to invite people to nominate for the Gold Coast Forum and to have it launch within weeks before the next meeting of Council on the 9th of August. So we actually, the urgency now is to kill it off, lest the government launch it before we have an opportunity to consider their response at the next council and resolve our position. That's why the urgency, right? Absolutely, Mr Mayor. Mm -hmm. So my question remains, Mr Mayor, I, I'm, you know, I stand by my view that the wording in this motion is combative. My, my question to you was, would you accept an amendment that softens that, or is that a foreshadowed motion, or how would no, you like no. to deal with it? I, I'd say I would this. love to support something, yeah. but I, don't, I can't support the wording that's up there. Yeah. I don't think it's the right way to go. It's yeah, okay. not, not good for our council. OK. What, of course, I, um, I'm bounded to uh, accept an amendment. Right. This is not a motion this yet. This is a... This is a so I'm saying it's, it's not, a motion just, before. No, it's no second there. Right? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry. So my my point here is that um, the intent, as voiced by Councillor Vorster, is to be succinct about this. Uh, however, um, when it gets to communication out of this motion, uh, it appears that it's been delegated to me to um, write and. Uh, um, whether it's to a local government association um, and even the way I look at it to state government. And in, in, in doing that part of it, that's where the... I mean, I get the message here that we don't want a selected uh, shadow council and, um, and some of those things and questions will be in there. And the way I'll formulate the letter... Well, either way, you can soften that, but unless somebody else is writing it, I'll be writing it the way I've been asked to write it in Clause 3. Right, so, Mr Mayor, my understanding is your the Clause 3 refers to you not writing to the Premier. It talks about you writing to all councillors in Queensland. Yeah, but I'll be and writing... It's an example of how yeah, I but, think maybe we but should... I would be writing to the Premier to ask questions. Yeah. Um, one... Uh, 
can you postpone the timing until LGAQ consider it? Um, uh, the term of reference, um, the, uh, the, are the forum members bound by the um, uh, Council's Code, Code of Conduct? Conduct? Those sort of things, so that I can enlighten and pass that on to councillors. But they are pretty, pretty Good questions. So, Mr Mayor, I, I, that, the conciliatory way you have phrased what you say you intend to write makes more sense to me. Um, I don't think the resolution that we're considering here or that we're talking about, because it's only just, you've only taken a mover, you haven't got a seconder. I, I think what you've explained... I haven't asked for a seconder. And so. I get that. So, the way you just explained it, I could support a motion that supported that. I don't think the motion that we're thinking about here communicates that. This is a right to all the councillors, right to the LGAQ, let's have a fight with the, lo the, the state government, which is combative and it is an approach. I don't okay. think we should take that approach, so I can't support the motion, but I want to support something and the words you used make sense to me. So, Mr Mayor, could I ask um, a question? I'll go to Councillor Vorster to... Um, look, th th thanks, Mr Mayor, and <clears throat> yes, I want to acknowledge it's combative, but combative does not necessarily mean unproductive. And I've been very combative with the government, for example, on the issue of fire ants. And I feel as though we need to be combative in order to make a very necessary point on behalf of people here on the ground. My question through you, Mr Mayor, to Councillor Tozer, is what in the motion is so combative as to undermine his support of the motion? Is it, for example, the words that say, seeking to restate local government is best placed to provide considered, transparent and democratic representation? Is that too combative? Or, or is it too combative, if we can scroll up a little bit, to say that establishment of an unelected unaccountable community group usurps the constitutional role of local government in Queensland. Which of those two or any other words breaks the threshold of combativeness that means that Councillor Toza can't support it? And the reason why I ask, Mr Mayor... Have you finished? Uh... Yeah, well, the reason why I ask is perhaps we don't need to materially change the motion. We don't have a seconder, and if there's one word that's a trigger word for Councillor Toza, Perhaps we can be conciliatory in the chamber, but while my words are combative, the words on the screen are quite plain speaking. The so, Council Mr. Mayor, what is combative to me is the approach, which is uh, the um, making assumptions about what is intended by the community forum, um, using words like usurping and prone to political rent seeking, costly, confusing. I don't think we actually know about the costs. I don't think we understand. We can make assumptions about all those things, but we actually lack the information to make clear uh, or establish a clear position on those points. And I don't know whether it will be a Zoom meeting. Maybe it won't be a face-to-face -face meeting. We don't actually know. The reality is it might be very little cost, um, but until we find out more information, I think we can establish very clearly that we... We, uh, and everything we do in this chamber is established under the Local Government Act, which is a piece of state legislation. And so we, we don't operate independent of the state. In fact, everything we do is actually part of state legislation. Um, I think we can bring it to our attention that we've, you've got our attention, Madam Premier. Uh, we are actually not interested in having our roles as elected representatives undermined. However, could you provide more information on this community forum so we can establish a position? Because right now, is the time for us to establish a position, but we can't do that until we have the right information. So our okay. first step, what is combative, is not gathering the information before we resolve to take action. Okay. So, councillors, um, hey, is lunch, lunch ready? Okay, just thought I asked that question. I'm hungry too, Mr. Mayor. So what, what, um, what, what I suggest is this, as we break for lunch, um, <laughs> Don't that the work that's already the work that's already been put forward to by by Council Vorster, we tweak it to be preamble. Just bear with me. And that the motion reads that the mayor writes to the premier to seek further information on the intention of the Gold Coast Community Forum, and express concern with the information currently presented 
particularly given the role of local government in Queensland. But my point here is that uh, uh, if we have that, a lot of that to, to, to uh, modify it as preamble, and at the end, I've got that, and, uh, and if there's no answer, at the very least, in the preamble, then I can further... Um, well, I will CC that to local government association. Uh, Mr Mayor, the wording that you've just described, I feel very confident I can support. Uh, Councillor Borster. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. And I'm, I'd be dead keen hearing more voices in this chamber um, on this topic because really it affects our, yep. our vocation. Not our job, our vocation. And I think we need to hear from more than myself, Councillor Tozer, Councillor Young, Owen Jones and um, Councillor Gates. I think you made a contribution. Um, I did too, you know. Goes without saying, Mr Mayor. <laughs> well, he didn't well, say. Well, we haven't got a motion. And, and, no, no. And, I, I, and, 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 and I haven't I've, asked for a seconder, you see. Okay, so it shouldn't actually be in yeah. this space without a live motion. Yes. Well, well I've, I've made the attempt to move the motion. Yeah. Um, now, Mr Mayor... No, no. No, no. I, I was suggesting that you had contributed. I have. Yes, uh, and I'm acknowledging your contribution. OK. So, Where are we going? So, Mr Mayor, I, I appreciate your role as chair, trying to form consensus amongst the chamber. Um, but in the same way your words might solicit the support of Councillor Toza, it loses my support. OK. And, and it does so, Mr Mayor, because... We have been invited by the peak industry body that represents all councils across Queensland to put forward motions which affect the sector. And to the best of my knowledge, and I stand to be corrected, there was a general business item, perhaps, at the Water and Waste Committee. Yeah. Right? A general business item at the Water and Waste Committee, which was in... It was an agenda item, but... But today, in Water and Waste, when we considered that paper, we took the opportunity of putting forward a motion for consideration by the LGAQ annual meeting and conference on the issue of, I think, green products in a directory or something. Now, if green products in a directory is important enough for our council to take to this industry conference, Surely, the way the government treats the industry at large demands at least as much attention and advocacy on the behalf of our council. So my concern with your motion, proposed wording, Mr Mayor, is that it is a marked step backward and okay. robs us with the opportunity to try and build consensus within the sector by writing merely to the Premier. And with all due respect to the Premier, there are countless letters that I've written to her government that have gone completely ignored. I have written to the Premier and invited her to meet with me in Rabina so that I could discuss the issues of Rabina with the Premier. The Premier holds a Cabinet meeting in Rabina. And I'm not saying that I should receive the same invitation as you, Mr Mayor, but I have no faith... I have no faith, based on track record, that the government will actually respond to us in time and defer their decision until they open expressions of interest. And, Mr Mayor, the, the other reason that I express significant caution around the proposed approach, as opposed to what I'm putting forward, is that while the forum may look at largely state issues. And we don't know, but, but that's a suggestion advanced by Councillor Gates, which I fully respect and will concede to. The Premier's own media release talks about the local economy and opportunities in the local economy and growing the local economy, among other local priorities. And today, we considered a report from our economic committee that proposed we spend money on an investment attraction project to stimulate the economy. And if we were going to establish a Gold Coast Forum, I can tell you what I would call it. I'd call it Experience Gold Coast. 
which is the work of this council. Okay. So, Mr Mayor, for all of those reasons, I feel really strongly about this, mm -hmm. and if you win Councillor Tozer, you lose me. And it might be that that's the majority view of the council, but I believe very strongly in the role of local government. Okay. Thank you. Now, now we're second way into experience, Gold Coast um, um, commentary there. Um, councillors, I move a procedural motion that uh, this matter, a general business, that this general business matter lie on the table until we've dealt with item 16. I second that, Mr. Mayor. Seconder is Councillor Owen Jones. Minute taker, can you put in, in those sort of wording? No, that, that item 15, it's not a motion yet, that item 15, General Bissart, yeah, good on you. Lie on the table or die on the table, Mr. Mayor? Um, <laughs> let, let it lie for now on the table. <laughs> lay whatever you want. Just no, no, just lay it on the table, I don't care. <laughs> All right, on the table until item 16.1 is dealt with. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor and Jones, you still happy with those? You happy with those words? Okay. Anyone speak against? Put the motion to you. All in favour, show hands. Against. Motion carried. Okay. No, stay there. You're not leaving anywhere. Just a second. Where's? Just if I could make a suggestion that perhaps that media release could be printed for us to have a look at it before we consider this matter any further after the yeah, lunch we'll, break. We'll do that during... That's the next bit. You're a good idea. So, we're on item 16, Councillors. Oh, I have a declaration. On item 16.1? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Um, Mr Mayor, I'm making this declaration because of advice given to me by the new General Counsel and it's actually in conflict with previous advice that I'd received from Clayton Utz and our former City Solicitor. But in an abundance of caution, I wish to um, declare that um, Jackie Cross, who is being considered um, for one of the... Um, director positions on Experience Gold Coast, um, is also a director of Cross Promotions who made a contribution to my 2014 and 15 election campaigns. Uh, previous, previous advice suggested that even if it were a prescribed interest, which it is not, that no declaration would be required. But um, there was also a question put to me about uh, whether there was a consideration that um, Jackie Cross was a close personal friend. Um, I have previously called her a friend, but by no means is she a close personal friend, nor a related party. She's never been to my home, for example. Um, I've known her through the business community in the main. Um, but I wanted to make the declaration about the donations received from Cross Promotions um, in 2014 and 2015, outside of the prescribed period, um, but that I accepted those donations, but I would like to remain in the room and participate in this strategic decision for the city. Councillor Hamill. Mr Mayor, happy to move the exact same words I've done for the last three. Can you do that, please? So She's not minutes. your close friend, right? You've got a dog, right? Mr Mayor, I've oh, been yeah. to two of those big parties at their home that you've been to. So it, she's as close a friend to me as she is to you. Oh, no, she's um, closer to you. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it, there's no close personal relationship, Mr yeah. Mayor. I, I mean, we, we would be abrogating our responsibility it's if okay. we didn't Let's have... It's OK. Let's just look at the motion. Uh, participate in... Councillor Joe. So, Mr Mayor, I'm happy... 
I'm happy to second it, um, but in doing so, I think that we're all going to need to be cognizant of any other conflicts that anybody else might want to be making yeah. because we're going to run out of people voting yes. depending on how excited we want to be about these conflicts. Okay, sounds good. Um, just lock in the, this motion for now, all right? Councillors, uh, any other declaration on this bit so I know who won't be voting on this? Councillor Lacasse, don't have to say why. Just that you're not, you're not, you're going to declare, yeah? Well, I just need to know whether I need to declare. Oh, okay. Be, be, because, and I, and I think I did actually mention this before in discussion, uh, just from memory, and I, I think it, I think nothing became of it, but someone might remember better than I. Um, but, but basically, I, I, I did, I did rise to say many meetings ago when this was came up that um, Danielle. Uh, Vice, uh, Danielle Weiss, who's actually on the uh, on the list of potential, yeah, is, is a friend of mine. I'm a friend of Danielle and her husband, Skylar. Um, they have been to my place uh, only once. They came for lunch. Um, and, uh, but yeah, they, they are, I, I consider them friends, but, you know, but, but again, if you, if you want to drill down to what's a friend, what's a close personal friend, I don't know. This is where the whole legislation becomes absolutely ridiculous. So, I don't know. Um, Mr. Mayor, there is a list in the Code of Conduct. Yeah. It's got yeah. to do with being a... I'm just about to go to the council, Jen. <coughs> yeah. I've had friends, I've had people come to my house. Mr. CEO, can you uh, <laughs> get the definition of uh, close personal friend? Um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm happy for, for general... Sorry, on my feet. I'm happy for our general council to, to talk to this one about close personal friend. Um, and what the definition would be. So I know she was having a separate conversation. So the question towards you, General Counsel, is how would you define close personal friend under the Act and whether or not this, in this case, which is one that, as the councillor has indicated, he's declared, I think, on one yes. occasion before. Well, yeah, um, so, or sought to declare, I should say. Uh, through the Chair, there is actually no specific definition of close personal relationship, but you just have to reflect on the relationship with that you have with the person. I think examples have been given in the past as to whether you'd go to a dinner party at their house on the weekend, whether you would attend their wedding in order to determine that type of relationship. Um, this is also not a general ordinary business matter. You may be familiar with that exemption provision where if you were nominated to a board by council, that would be an ordinary business matter arguably. But this is a different scenario that Councillor Gates is describing where an applicant for a position on the board, um, uh, the councillor will then have to assess whether that is a related party to the councillor. And one of the subcategories, if there's no uh, donation, for instance, is whether you have a close personal relationship with that individual. So, are you close, Bob? <laughs> You're going to do. We've got an advice for eight bullet points of how to define close personal friend. I'm just trying to find it on the internet. Okay. While we're thinking about this, we'll adjourn. 30 minutes. Are we happy? And then we can find our friends. <laughs>
Welcome back, viewers. Okay. So where we're at is that we have a uh, declaration by Councillor Gates and I asked the question, is there anyone else so I know who's not voting? And then we, uh, and then we got hungry when we had lunch. So, and now we've looked at the definition of close friendship, whatever, personal, personal friendship. And, uh, and so, uh, with that in mind, um, if you're going to have a decoration, uh, just give me a, put your hand up, and you're going to have one so that I know I'm not going to count your votes, and then we'll go to the next one. Okay. Anyone has uh, other decorations? So I would know. Councillor Lacastra, so when, when we're doing Councillor Gates' one, uh, don't vote, Okay. You do one, okay. Anyone else? Mate, to be honest with you, I look at all this. It's me the city, I know them all. But lucky they're not my friends. <laughs> Personal friends. Gee, everyone's going to be upset. All right. So I know that uh, two's not going to vote. Um, there's, a, there's a motion afoot. Councillor Hamill, seconded by Councillor Owen Jones. Does anyone want wish to speak against? Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Please stand. Through you, Mr Mayor, to the City Solicitor. So if we define that the relationship is not a personal close friend, um, I'm just curious why it was proposed that this would be presented as a declarable interest. If you could just clarify, thanks. Uh, through the chair, if there's not a close personal relationship, um, the person would not be a related party to the councillor and there would be no declaration required. It's only if there's a potential personal interest at stake that the declaration would be relevant. Yeah. The difference here is donation. Okay. Radio. All in favour, show hands. Mayor Tate, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Hemel, Councillor Peter Young, Councillor Patterson, Councillor Bowden Lumsden, Councillor Toza, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor McDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. Against. Motion carry. Councillor Gates, Councillor Lacastra, and Councillor Vorster did not vote. Over to Councillor Lacastra. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make a declaration. There's uh, uh, one of those uh, uh, nominees is a, a friend of mine, um, but uh, it's really, uh, I don't think there's anything from my point of view that is um, uh, that would stop me uh, from, uh, it's certainly not going to affect the way that, that I uh, weigh everything up. So, um, but it's just really just to be totally transparent. Um, so uh, I've actually got, um, let's have a look. So we need to change my, yeah. Oh, a friendship. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a friendship. So it's uh, up to council to decide whether that's a, you know, a close personal friend as such, but just to be fully transparent, um, I'm just doing this, so the matter, uh, where are we? I always need to be helped through with these things. Uh, so okay. The name of the related party is uh, Danielle uh, McPhail. McPhail. Well, that's saying close personal. Well, is I'm just close? saying a... Personal friend, uh, yeah. Um, 
Manager of the Reactive Party's interest in this matter is... Uh, well, but her last name is not Weiss, it's something no, else. It's not, Ms McLeod. Is that it? A double bang, is it? Yep. Oh, it's, That's, how it's yeah. That's how it's listed in the report. Yeah. All right, nature okay. of the party? Yeah, the nature is a, a, a nominee for um, a position. Okay. Uh, if the council would like to gift uh, the name of the... No, there's no gift. Um, the nature of the relationship with the other person to the council or related party. We've just done that, haven't we, friend? Yes? So you ignore the second section? Sorry? Ignore the second section. If the council is... Oh, sorry, if the council or related party is personal, yeah, okay. I'm voluntarily deciding... Uh, okay, no, I'm seeking permission to participate in making a decision about the matter. All right. Why? Oh, why? Um, well, I think... I thought I said that before, because... Um, I certainly don't think that this is going to prejudice me. I know a lot of people uh, whose names are there, and um, uh, I, I know them, but I can consider Danielle a, a friend, but it will not uh, prejudice my decision-making, I guess. Okay. It's the best way I can put it. <coughs> huh? Do I have a mover? Oh. Councillor Tozer, are we going to...? Um, I would move that Councillor Castro should, despite the conflict of interest, may participate in the decision, to, but despite the Councillor's conflict of interest, um, because the interest is minor and remote and doesn't meet the definition for close personal friend. <coughs> You okay with that? Oh, yeah, it's close enough. Yeah, it's good. It's great. Seconder. Oh, no. Councillor Pauline Young. Anyone speak against? The motion to you. All in favour, show your hands. Mayor Tate, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Hemel, Councillor Peter Young, Councillor Patterson, <coughs> Councillor Bowden Lumsden, Councillor Tozo, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Borster, your hand? No, no. 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 Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor McDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. Against? Motion carry. Please record Councillor Gates, Lacastra and Vorster did not vote. Councillor Gates got a question. Mr Mayor, this complicates matters for me given Councillor Lacastra has made a declaration that he has a friend. I have a friend who I spoke to about a donation, but I, under the definitions she's not what is described as a close personal friend. But given that a motion's been moved by Councillor Lacastra. Does that impact on me? No. Because I'm not declaring because... Mr CEO. Thank you. No. Um, it's for each councillor to determine whether or not they have a conflict and it's for each councillor to determine whether or not anyone on that list would be determined to be a personal friend or not. So Close one councillor's declaration in no way impacts on another councillor's and shouldn't. <laughs> <sighs> Councillor Vorster. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. It just shows you how careful we've got to be about state government intervention in local government, that we end up with legislation like this. Um, Mr Mayor, I'm just rising to make my own de declaration, if you'll take that. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Mayor. The nature of the declarable conflict of interest is as follows. Um, a reasonable person may form the view that I have a personal interest in this matter because a shortlisted nominee
has served with me recently on a committee and because I regularly meet with this person publicly, um, in furtherance of political causes. And I will soften it less combative in my reasons for attempting to remain in the room. <laughs> um, if we could scroll down to the next section. Uh, the name of the related party is Trent Belling. Two L's. Uh, Belling. I'm the one with the belly. Uh, the nature of the relationship <laughs> is... Um, a friend with whom I am regularly uh, engaged on social and political matters. And that should say a friend with whom. And the nature of the related parties' interests in the matter are, are as follows. Um, th uh, they have sought, yeah, they're a shortlisted candidate. Um, and uh, Mr. Mayor, I would seek to remain in the room and participate in the decision about the matter for the following reason. Um, <laughs> Um, I believe that I am <clears throat> able um, to act solely in the public interest and to show no deference to the interests of uh, Mr Belling. Um, and that, so we can go comma, and that um, any arguable relationship is far too remote to have any consequence on this decision. However, full stop, however, Sorry, full stop after decision. However, I acknowledge uh, written guidance that councillors should act with caution should a relationship give rise to a perception issue or to make that councillor in any way uncomfortable with the outcome. <clears throat> On that basis, this declaration is made voluntarily um, in the interests of transparency. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
No question. I want to finish this motion first. Wake me up when September ends. <laughs> we're ready for and someone want to move that? Councillor Toza. Uh, Mr Mayor, look, I'm happy to move the motion. I um I feel confident that the a decision can be made in the public interest despite the conflict of interest as discussed. Okay, fair enough. Seconder anyone? Councillor Pauline Young. Anyone wish to Councillor a question. Okay. Mr. Mayor, through you, I'd like to pose a question to Councillor Forster. Uh, if you don't mind, if we go up, scroll up to his original declaration. Um, keep going, please. Yeah, that's it. And because I regularly meet with this person publicly in furtherance of political causes, that's the thing that caught me. So. <laughs> Is it Mr. Belling's political causes or yours? Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I don't want to um, disclose any personal information which might breach my obligations under the Privacy Act, but um, it'd be fair to say, if you Google him, that uh, Mr. Belling is a member of the Liberal National Party, and I too am a member of the Liberal National Party, and the both of us served alongside each other on the successful committee to saw Councillor Caldwell elected to the seat of Fadden. So we catch up regularly in furtherance of political causes, uh, which have included or focused on the election of Councillor Caldwell to the federal parliament. Anyone want to speak against? Put the motion to you. All in favour, show our hands. Mayor Tate, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Patterson, Councillor Bowden Lumsden, Councillor Toza, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor MacDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. Against. Councillor Hamill and Councillor Peter Young. Motion carried. Um, Councillor Gates, Councillor Vorster, and Councillor Lacastra did not vote. And I have a question. I note uh, with interest the last declaration <coughs> that you serve on a committee. Huh? Well, reading the grey paper here, the Transitional Governance Committee, which all those people are on, and I'm on it as well. So what is it, you know, so Mr CEO, Well, no, I'm talking first up. The Councillor Vossa mentioned he's on a committee with Mr. Belling. Mr. Mayor, my understanding is that where council appoints a councillor to a no, no, I'm talking about your committee. You're on a committee with Mr. Belling. He's not a council committee, but no, no, to to elect uh, Cameron Corwell. Yes, but yeah, I'll... I'm not asking you about my 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 okay. committee. I'm asking about your declaration. Sure. Okay. So. What happens, to answer Councillor Toza's question, the committee that I was referring on, on is the Transition Advisory Committee of Experience. Ah. Yeah. That you appointed me to. So, but my point is, um, you know, if you're going to stretch the whole thing, I'm on the committee. But because I'm appointed by... Council, I'm not going to worry about it. Just thought, you know, I know the people in Brisbane are watching. All right, okay. Another declaration? Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's just a question in regards to we're talking about friendships and close friendships, etc. Um, during the process when we were advertising for candidates to express an interest, to, for experience, Gold Coast, the CEO, from memory, sent an email out to councillors reminding them of the dates and to encourage us to um, reach out to two parties. Um, so I did that with a couple of people and at least one of those people is now on the short list. Um, does that in any way, shape or form create a, a conflict? 
If you don't consider that you have a close personal relationship with that individual, it wouldn't fall within the category, no. Yeah, thank you. But the other thing I've got to ask you, have you got an open and persuadable mind with other candidates who are standing against the... Uh, Mr that Mayor, I, I have an open and persuadable mind, in the, but not so open that my mind will... my brain will fall out. OK, I just... Nah. So, Councillor Gates. I feel that because of Councillor Vorster's and uh, Councillor Lacastra's declarations, I need to make a declaration that Jackie Cross is my friend. I just had a scroll back through um, any text messages and I've had a couple with her uh, with birthday greetings and what have you and there's no denying she's a friend but she doesn't fall under the category of a close personal friendship under the guidance that we've received uh, previously, but can I please include and have it re-voted on that uh, Jackie Cross is a friend and a director of Cross Promotions because that is the truth. She's a friend but not a close personal friend. Uh, she's never been to my home as I've said previously. I've been to her home a couple of times but for very large parties where half of the Gold Coast has been in attendance. Um, and, you know, we do talk from time to time, but not on a regular basis. But I just want to be absolutely transparent that, um, that my declaration is in order. So if I need to make a separate declaration... I think, um, I just if that's the case, that's already been voted on, not done. It'll be a second declaration. I can't go and OK, that, and that's fine, something. Mr Mayor, and I understand that. So if we could just go down to the relationships part and indicate a new one for me, as well as this one that has been voted upon, I'd be very grateful to have it on the record. And I, too, encouraged people to apply for the roles because... Um, we were seeking the best possible number of applicants to consider, but I have a fully open and persuadable mind in making the decisions today. See, what I find interesting is that in our own mind, we got our own definition of close friends. You know, like to uh, combatant, if somebody's been in the in the front line to get, they're close. But just because uh, we're friends and we had a bite to eat at McDonald's, and we've met we're not that close. Work. You see, so it's interesting that uh, the legislation is uh, it's really wide and open, and 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 my point here is that. Uh, uh, we, we're trying our best to interpret that. And that's it's why... It's Jackie Cross, not Frost. <laughs> Thanks. I like Jackie, Cr Jackie Frost too. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr Mayor, even with friendships, it would never make you, me or anyone else in this chamber vote against the right outcome. We would vote with our conscience every time, regardless. So it's a bit of a, a moot... But anyway. Of course. But anyway, let me please just put this on the record. Yeah. No, we're um, good. The nature of... Uh, yeah, shortlisted. Uh, no, just friend. Thank you. It's fine. And I'm seeking permission to participate in making the decision. Mm-hmm. Gee, all those people on Facebook that I friended. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they didn't have the button for close friends. I might have pressed those. Oh, is it my spot? Okay. Okay, let's uh, wish to remain in the room. Yeah. Where are we? I'm happy for it to be the same as the other, but um, just by adding, I. Uh, in full transparency and, in, sorry, yeah. Um, sorry, Mr Mayor. No, this... I don't... I just wanted to clarify a point. 
can we finish with this one or? It's the latest one. Oh, all right. Council Bailens, London. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. No, no, you'll have to stay. Thank you. Thank just you. wanted to clarify a point. The Deputy Mayor said that she um, had encouraged or recommended one of the applicants to apply. Was that the, specifically the friend listed in the declaration or was that more broad as well? Uh, it was broader. I had a number of people contact me and um, I encouraged them all to apply. Okay, so if I could clarify one more point to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so they approached you, you didn't proactively go out to them and encourage them to apply, they've approached yourself and then you've said you should apply? Yeah, their, their interest has been brought to my attention and I have most definitely supported as many applications as possible coming forward. Okay, that's what I wanted to clarify, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Okay. Now, motion. Councillor yeah. Tozer. Mr Mayor, I'm happy to uh, move the motion uh, identified in A. Um, okay. I feel very confident that a uh, decision can be made in the public interest and that the not only does the interest disclosed doesn't meet the definition of the close personal friend as stipulated in their training, um, it also seems minor and remote. Yeah. Second that Councillor Taylor. <coughs> All right. Anyone speak against? All in favour, show hands. Mayor Tate, Councillor Owen Jones, Councillor Hemel, Councillor Peter Young, Councillor Patterson, Councillor Bowden Lumsden, Councillor Tozer, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Pauline Young, Councillor MacDonald, and Councillor O'Neill. Against? Motion carried. And the three councillors, Gates, Lacastra, and Borster, did not vote. Any more friends, anyone? It's, it's not us, it's the Act. So, now. Let's do some work. Here we go. Councillors, I move to proceed your motion. That we're going to close. Uh, the reason being? G. Go to G. There it is. There's my G. Negotiation relating to a commercial matter involving the local government for which a public discussion would be likely to prejudice the interests of the local government. Mr. CEO, are you happy with my G? I'm happy with your G. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Pauline Young. Anyone want to speak against the motion? All in favour, show hands. Again, carry unanimous. Mr CEO, can you ask the officer to clear the gallery? Can we also clear the
streaming on and welcome back viewers. I moved. I moved the motion, where is it? I'm not going to read it out. I move that one, that the report attachment of the, to be deemed, etc., non confidential, just scroll it. So I don't know, it's on the screen, all right? As red and yellow is the main thing, all right? Uh, Second to Councillor Gates. I say this that um, as mayor of the city, and when you reflect on all the people who applied and to be part of the experience board, uh, the calibre of the people uh, is quite amazing. And it made my our job quite difficult in finalise. Uh, to the the board, and, and for those uh, people that uh, that uh, that didn't quite get there, can't, thank you so much for loving our city and being passionate. And for those people who been uh, elected in by our council, I'm confident that the experience board is going to be one of the most I won't use the word experience, but it's dynamic. Um, for our city and that board uh, to all the city um, constituents out there uh, we're in very good hands and looking forward for uh, the the establishment of experience Gold Coast so um, councillors um, if anyone wants to speak against the motion I invite you now um, I invite Councillor Gates to close the motion for me Mr Mayor, thank you very much because I would just like to convey the appreciation of all of the council for the people who actually put their names forward. I know that many of us were involved in encouraging people uh, to put their names forward for this role because we recognise the importance of the new experienced Gold Coast Board to the future of our city. It has been a path that we've taken that has been extremely difficult given the controlled entities that we all dearly loved and supported but in recognising our future and what is best for the city into the future we've taken this path and we couldn't have had a more difficult task than what we were faced with t today because any one of the shortlisted people in every category could have fulfilled the role and we would have been happy. So um, we've fought and argued and uh, we've arrived where we are. And I think uh, the manner in which you undertook the voting today, Mr Mayor, uh, is second to none. I think that we all had a wonderful opportunity to put forward our views and uh, the way that it was handled, we got to a very fair decision that is well supported by every member of this council. So thank you and uh, good luck to the new board. All right, let's put it to the vote then. The, the matter, the debate's closed. Let's get a unanimous out of this one. All in favour, show of hands. <laughs> Against. <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> Yes, sir. So, um, councillors, I'm going to proceed your motion. I'll wait for the minute taker and then they'll move it. Hi. Okay, so we're ready. Proceed your motion. Councillor, I move proceed your motion that we take. Item, where the hell did it go? 15, 15.1 off the table and deal with it. Second to Councillor Peter Young. All in favour, show hands. Against, motion carries. So we're back on 15.1. Uh, yeah? Before we left the room. The press release that none of us had read that related to this item. Oh, the state government. The media release that this is the subject of. 
Mm. Oh, all right. I'm sorry, Councillor Borster. It was just a request before we left oh, the no, room no, that understand. the the media release right. be distributed. So who's we got, knew who's what got the media voting. release? Let's photocopy it. I listened intently to Councillor Vorster, that's why I didn't need it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so no one did it. All right. Okay. Now, um, what happened? You know how I moved the motion to be nice, and uh, and I went to the Minister Secretary and said if you could insert that in as item two. It's now on the screen. Um, but it's still, it's not a motion, it's uh, still for discussion. But I would, no, with that, I'm saying to Council Vorster, um, I'd recommend the that yellow is in the, your proposed minutes. Councillor Vorster. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And in a conciliatory manner and in no way being combative, uh, I would be very happy for this to be part one of the motion, Mr Mayor. And the reason why I say that is I think we need to separate our direct lobbying effort with the Premier, which will be on constructive terms, uh, with the advocacy or the motion that we would hope the Local Government Association of Queensland consider quite separately. So by moving yours to the front, we've got an opportunity to present ourselves as very conciliatory to the state government, which should arrest or assuage the concerns of Councillor Toza. But I still feel very firmly that the Local Government Association of Queensland should have the opportunity to consider the ramifications for the sector. And I think there is merit in us in that forum being very pointed in our words. So I think this achieves the best of both, Mr Mayor. Okay. Uh, Councillor Gates. Mr Mayor, Councillor gave me the release, and this is why we needed to see the release. Because it clearly says, as one of the fastest growing regions in Queensland, the government is committed to improving connectivity, access to health care and housing support, with $4.4 billion invested in the state budget. This includes, and it, it goes on to talk about all state government responsibilities, like um, investing in infrastructure to support jobs, health services, uh, education, uh, money to improve social housing and improve services, homelessness, skilling Queenslanders for work to fund training opportunities, so I'm not convinced there's a slight against the state government here, Mr Mayor, in this media release. I think it is inherently responsible of the government to communicate with the community because they're elected representatives too. Oh. And so they should have a community forum on the Gold Coast. They actually should be talking to the people who live here who support the Labor Party. Um, I, I, I'm not convinced that this is intended as a slight against local government in any shape or form, I'm more inclined to think it's about state issues as I originally suggested might be the case. Councillor Vorster. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. And I understand that we, I, I'm not quite sure whether that was a question or if we've entered in debate, but... Um, no, no, if, it's, if, it's just a discussion at the moment. Sure. And we'll so, get into the debate shortly. So, OK, Mr Mayor. Well, in response to Councillor Gates's um, assessment of the media release. Might I just say that the media release is a jumbled mess of copy and paste bullet points across various departments in the state government. And I think it's erroneous to rely on parts of the media statement to provide any context to this particular part of the statement, which says quite clearly the government will appoint to a forum members of the community to articulate the priorities for the community. And it would be great if we lived in a Puritan 
system of government here in Queensland where there are local government responsibilities and there are state government responsibilities, but the state government pushes down things like planning to us, the state government pushes things down like biosecurity to us, and to the extent that we have local roads and a desire to co-invest in public transport services, including in the north of the city, local government and state government are entangled. So I think it would be erroneous to rely on the fact that this might be limited to state issues, given the very tight coupling of local government with the state. And my hesitation comes with the government being able to point to an unelected focus group rather than the council to decide what investments and projects to pursue. So I will concede Councillor Gates's point if local government and state governments stayed out of each other's businesses, but that's not the real politics. Yeah. Just, just on, on that, um, the reason why I've asked that, well, it's now item one to be included there, that's the first cab off the rank where I'll be writing straight away to seek more clarity and, and more information. Um, because of the time frame, um, that's why we're dealing with the matter now. Um, if from that, I mean, I'll circulate the answers uh, to all of us, and uh, and there's and if we go ahead, and the answers is like, oh, are we doing this because what Councillor Gates are saying? Well, I think item one satisfies with that, and um, and whether we push further items, um, I consult with you whether it's through a flying minute or whatever. But if the first one is um, uh, not clear uh, response, then we already have on the table to uh, continue our advocacy through, uh, it's our right, to our local government association, Queensland, at the annual meeting for the rest of council uh, for consideration. Um, Councillor Owen Jones. So, Mr Mayor, I appreciate that it's not yet a motion because there isn't a second R, but... Um, uh, I think earlier Councillor Tozer had asked whether or not you would take an amendment. Um, and uh, so I'd be inclined to start with one and finish with one and vote on that, Mr Mayor. And if that, if you wouldn't take that as an amendment, I'd like to foreshadow it as an outcome. Oh, OK. As, as an um, as a amended motion. motion? Yeah. Should that be a motion? So uh, I'm foreshadowing a motion at some point in time, if that's OK. As amended motion. Now I'll go to Councillor Patterson. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. So first of all, I'd like to second the motion. Oh, OK. Um, Who would like to second a motion? Uh, Councillor Patterson. Hey. The motion now is alive. Thank you. But you can't and speak on it. You Mr. can't speak on it yet. Oh, oh sorry. OK. <laughs> Councillor Vorster, the motion is now alive. You speak on it. Thank you. Start. Um, I know that we did a whole lot of things there, but you're happy with me to foreshadow? No, I, I was going because I, what I normally do is I ask to speak the the the, motion, the mover of the first motion uh, to speak on it, and then I ask for the amended motion. And then you can speak on the amendment motion, which is like speaking uh, uh, oppose or, or, or thereabouts, or for shadow. So I'll go back to Councillor Vosta. Excuse me, Councillor Vosta has the floor. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. And when I first... Um, brought this motion at your invitation to the attention of the Chamber, I was, of course, very animated. And perhaps that's just my personal temperament. Perhaps I can lean a little bit on my Italian heritage. Um, but, Mr Mayor, I think mostly the reason why I am animated is because I consider local government and the role of a councillor as a genuine vocation, a genuine calling and a service to the community. And I'm sure all of us have had occasion to go into bat 
for our community and plead the case with industry and other levels of government on behalf of our community. And that, Mr Mayor, is because we are the level of government that is closest to the people. And, Mr Mayor, the role of a councillor is, yes, to provide stewardship over the city and look after the, the future of the city to make sure that it is a livable and sustainable place. Um, but, Mr Mayor, it's also to be an advocate. And there can be no advocate more fiercely protective of their communities than an advocate that every four years has to go back to their community for a fresh social licence. There is a... In amongst this room, there are councillors who wish to work constructively with the state government and afford the state government the benefit of the doubt and to not, to use someone's phrase, poke them in the eye. But, Mr Mayor, I just want to reflect on what brought me to this point, a very emotional, invested point. The state government invited you, the mayor of the city, the first citizen of the city, to a cabinet meeting with a handful of hours' notice to plead the case on behalf of the Gold Coast, to set out our priorities. Not weeks, but hours. They engaged in a protracted process concerning the development of our city plan and amendment package two and three that forced us to, I think, four or five rounds of community consultation. And, Mr Mayor, because they did not like what we had to say on behalf of our communities, they trashed that plan. I would love to give the government the benefit of the doubt, Mr Mayor, but I don't believe that we can. And perhaps your letter to the government will prompt them to think again but I very much doubt so, because, Mr Mayor, they failed to consult with us in the first place. They've committed it to a media release, and I have every confidence that they will proceed to expressions of interest and appoint this board to meet before the end of the year. And why is this a problem, Mr Mayor? It's a problem because it actually undermines the function of local government and the status of this body, this council, as the representative of the collective will of the city. A group of people who not only have an ear to the community, but an eye to the future, and who are fully across the very detailed and at times technical information that's required to protect future prosperity whether it's in population forecasts, infrastructure pressures, or what the community has to say about lifestyle. The government, Mr Mayor, doesn't need another Gold Coast voice that they can listen to instead of local government. What the government needs, Mr Mayor, are better ears. I firmly believe that we need a more constructive relationship with the state government. But that won't come from playing nice over their plans to set up a competing advisory body. That will only come when they respect the role of local government and they respect the role we each have as elected representatives at the coalface of community issues. And I just want to draw attention to the issue of fire ants. I've said this a thousand times and I've been talking about it for years. But three years ago, I stood on a headland and I begged the government to change its approach to this invasive species. I begged the government. And I didn't do it in a nasty way, I did it in a constructive way. And time and time and time and time again, this council wrote to the government 
about our concerns. And at the end of that process, three years of acting in good faith, we're ending up with the most frightening biosecurity issue to ever affect the Gold Coast. That will have consequences for the Gold Coast and the taxpayer. We can work constructively with them, Mr Mayor. We make every attempt to work constructively with them, but we need them to work constructively with us. What we don't need is to give them an excuse to talk with someone else. And Mr Mayor, I mentioned one adage of my father. I don't know who I can attribute this one to. But whether it's in business or whether it's in public life, the worst thing that you can do is to do your market research in the mirror, to live in an echo chamber. None of us live in echo chambers because we're out in the streets, we're knocking on doors, we're holding town hall meetings, we're listening to the people who call, at, call us and walk into our offices. But if a government can choose who they listen to and rely on them to set the priorities of the city, we end up with an unaccountable committee with no connection and accountability to community. And, Mr Mayor, we can only end up with perverse outcomes. Many might argue that this is a meritorious pursuit and there's nothing wrong with the government being better engaged. My door is open. Your door is open, Mr Mayor. I'm sure we can achieve all of their aspirations for the Gold Coast Forum if they merely meet with us. I was quite aggrieved by the community cabinet process this time around because I remember the first community cabinet after I was elected. You might remember this moment too, Mr Mayor. I was very concerned with the way that fair zones were structured on the Gold Coast. We had about 14 of them. I secured support for council to endorse a position and you and I met at a community cabinet in a speed dating setting with the minister, the then Sterling Hinchliffe, who was the responsible minister. And what came out of that community cabinet meeting, Mr Mayor? A 30% reduction in public transport fares on the Gold Coast and a reduction of fare zones from 14 to 9. That is what we can achieve with a genuine community cabinet and councillors engaged in the process. Supporting their model allows them to opt out of that process, to listen just to the people who they want rather than the people who the Gold Coast want. In summary, Mr Mayor, we are a mature city. We are a capable city. We are a city of aspiration and we're a city that can articulate our priorities for the economy our priorities for community, all of the things that the government wants to surface. And I think it would be absurd for us to endorse a Gold Coast Forum that not only competes with us, the voice of the people, but also competes with the voice of experienced Gold Coast, a group that we have charged just moments ago for executing that economic plan on behalf of the Gold Coast. I really hope that a majority of my colleagues can see sense in supporting this motion. I appreciate that you might see it as being combative, but I see it as nothing less than the fight for relevancy for local government. It's not hyperbole, it's sincerely held. Thank you. Okay. Um, speaking against question, what is it? All right. Um, okay, Councillor Gates. The uh, media release has been distributed. Um, it's a joint statement from the Premier, from the Deputy Premier, because his portfolio relates to infrastructure, local government and assists the Premier on the Olympic and Paralympic Games. And it's also uh, a joint release from uh, Sharon Fentiman, the Minister for Health, because it relates to health. And it's also a joint statement from the Minister for Housing because it relates to housing. And in the body of the release, Mr Mayor, it says, the Premier announced a plan to develop a Gold Coast Community Forum, granted, Councillor Vorster. Um, she suggests that it will bring together residents, stakeholders, 
we could be stakeholders, and Queensland government representatives to identify opportunities to grow the local economy and to respond to emerging priorities. It further says that an expression of interest process will follow inviting local community representatives to become forum members. I would consider myself exactly that, a local community representative. I represent the whole of the city, but specifically Division 3 of the city. So it clearly suggests that there is an intent to include the wider Gold Coast community, to focus on a city that's booming, and to provide outcomes in terms of health, schools, nurses, doctors, firefighters, education. It lists all of the funding allocations that the state has made and they, they refer totally to um, state responsibilities. And I think we're, it's a storm in a teacup, to be honest, Mr Mayor. I think we have every opportunity to participate in this forum, should any of us wish. I'm sure that the Premier is not going to reject any one of us as a local community representative who might want to participate. I just think that this course of action in attacking, and it is an attack on the release that's been made, when I think there's every... Po and, and look, I, I'm an independent councillor. I'm not on anybody's team. But, well, I'm not a member of any political party, but the fact is that I don't yeah, see just, how just, we can just object... Just pause on that. Just because you're a member of any party, uh, when you're elected as independent, you are independent? I respect everyone is independent on this council, okay. Mr Mayor. I'm just making the point that I have no allegiance to anybody. I'm simply looking at this release on face value and I'm thinking... Their full intent seems to be creating jobs and delivering services to the city. And so I'm a little bit befuddled about why we would attack any government that chose to actually put time and effort into creating a better city. And when I read this release, it's about recognising our city as the fastest growing or one of the fastest growing and listening to the community. And we know that's what we all have to do as elected representatives. And there's no reason why none of us can put our names forward and suggest that we be part of this forum rather than opposing it. OK. Speaking for the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And I certainly hope the Deputy Mayor is correct that when they are referring to local community representatives, that they are referring to those local elected community representatives. Um, I'm not sure that I can take it on the face value that the Deputy Mayor does, and I'll tell you why. It is my privilege to sit on your Safer Suburbs Forum and to have done it since my term starts. I find it shocking that when the concerns that come to me from my residents more and more are about crime, even though that's not a local government matter. We bring it to the Safer Suburbs Forums. We meet with the head of Gold Coast Police. We meet with everyone. We have an outstanding invitation to, on, uh, to the minister, the police minister, Mark Ryan. He has not yet attended. After 18 months of an invitation to attend that critical forum, same when we had the major issues with the city plan amendments, you wrote a letter on our behalf, Mr Mayor, to Minister Scanlon and Minister Miles saying, can we please sit down and discuss this? Because between us, we have spoken with thousands, tens of thousands of residents. We understand their concerns and why we put this up. Again, we, were, we got a decline. So forgive me, Deputy Mayor, if I don't share your positivity that this will be open and welcome to elected representatives. I urge our ministers to accept those invitations we've provided them before, particularly on the Safer Suburbs Forum, when it's such a concern at the top of every Gold Coaster. We don't have people who feel safe here at the moment, yet the 
the Minister for Police has refused, well, not refused, but just not yet had time to attend a Safer Suburbs Forum over the last 18 months. We've given him many dates with the head of Gold Coast Police, the head representatives from all aspects. That is why I think it is fair for us to send this and say, look, we have a role. We have a role in representing our community and we would like for you to engage with us. Thank you. Okay. Speaking for the motion. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking for the motion. Oh, sorry, I thought Councillor Patterson just spoke for. I'm speaking oh, okay. against the against. motion. Okay, fair enough. You're right. <laughs> no, 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 not trying to chair the meeting, Mr Mayor. It's up to you. Happy, no, to, you're happy right. to go in whichever order you'd like. Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, <laughs> number one in this motion, I think, actually makes a lot of sense. You know, there's no doubt that we've um, seen a press release today that raises some concerns for us. And I know that everyone in this room... Uh, consult their community in different ways. And so do state politicians. So they consult their communities in different ways, Mr Mayor. Um, I spent a lot of time speaking about local government issues. Even just now, I've, uh, just as 30 of June, I've concluded three community consultations, um, survey processes with my local residents about things like playgrounds and sporting precincts and swimming pools and the things that are council's business. And frankly, I am swamped with that sort of work. I, um, you know, I love my job and I spend a lot of time doing it. Um, but I'm actually not particularly interested in hosting forums about community safety that much, unless it relates to playgrounds being safe. Um, I'm not interested in talking about the work that police do necessarily, unless it helps council do their job and, and execute our responsibilities. I'm definitely not interested particularly in, in consulting the community about hospitals and health and things like that. I have a state member of parliament who I work quite closely with, um, whose responsibility it is to consult the community about those state-related issues, and she um, has ideological views that align her with the Liberal Party, Mr Mayor. And I know that the current government at the state level is a Labor Party, and I appreciate that political divide, that, that ideological contest that happens between the Liberal Party and the Labor Party. Um, and I think that actually serves democracy well. Uh, in that sphere, in the, within the realm of the state government responsibilities, the, the Labor versus Liberal ideological, and obviously there's other parties as well, I don't want to exclude One Nation and the Greens and the Clive Palmer Party, whatever they stand for. Um, Legalised cannabis. Sorry, and the Legalised Cannabis Panel. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. That competitive tension between different ideological views is important, but what I don't want to have happen is I actually don't want to host a discussion about hospitals. And frankly, it makes most sense to me that the state government of the, of the time executes any mechanism they can to consult community about responsibilities that are their responsibility. Um, I have no problem with a community forum. Um, I would like to know whether they are trying to undermine local government. I suspect they are not, given that the press release does capture, as Councillor Gates says, all state government responsibilities, whilst they all impact local government, um, unlike... Uh, some of the other councillors who have expressed a frustration in engaging with the state government. I have a really good relationship with the state government ministers. When I write to them, they tend to write back to me. I don't always like what they say, but I tend to find I get a response. Um, I write to them exclusively about divisional issues. I don't write to them about whole of city issues. Mr Mayor, that's your responsibility. But when something comes up in my division and I need to execute an outcome or try to get a response about a matter, um, I, I do it. Just the other day, the Director General of... The Transport and Main Roads wrote me a letter about a state road which I've asked a question I noticed about today. I was unsatisfied with the response and that process, that community forum, that community engagement is an important process. Um, I think it's entirely responsible that the state government engage with the community across all of the city in order to gain feedback about actions that they have. They may wish to do that with the state members of parliament from the opposing ideological view to their own, but they may also choose to engage with the broader community or the whatever the Labor framework is for SECs. I don't even know what the Labor groups are called, the state electoral committees. Um, this proposal that we have that we're talking about today appears to undermine a state government seeking to get feedback. It doesn't undermine my role role. I'm never going to stop engaging with community on, on issues that are interesting to me. And frankly, if I wrote to a state minister and... I don't get the response I like or I get no response at all, it's incumbent upon me to pick up the phone and call the Chief of Staff and say what's going on or one of the staff members and ask what's happening. Why, why aren't you responding to this letter? This is a serious issue. Um, and if I'm not willing to do that, then maybe I'm not doing my job. Um, frankly, 
oh, I'd really love to move in a minute saying, let's just ask a question. Let's gather more information before we, you know, before we embark on this process of engaging the Local Government Association of Queensland, undermining the whole political process of state and local government responsibilities. Frankly, we are, unfortunately, appearing by, by supporting this motion, cost-shifting ourselves. You know, why would we want to attract more feedback about state issues? If we want to be a state politician, we should just go ahead and be a state politician. Otherwise, we should stick to what we're meant to be doing, stick to our core business, consult our community every day, knock on doors if that's our approach, engage in email communication if that's what we should do, um, but engage in the whole local government association and trying to go down a track of rallying support against a, a, a Labor state government and, and using phrases like Marxism... Sorry, is, Mr... Is in, sorry, it's frankly sorry, ridiculous... Sorry, in Mr, just sorry, Mr Mayor. Look, I... Is it a point of order? You've made... You've made... You've point of order. Yes. Mr Mayor, at no time, and, and perhaps I've had a, a blank here, but at no time during my contribution to this debate did I invoke the name of the political party that happens to hold office whatsoever. And throughout this debate, others, not just Councillor Tozer, have characterised my contribution here today as partisan, merely because I might hold membership to a particular party or because there's a suggestion that my place is not here in the chamber. Um, the reality is, Mr Mayor, I have an issue with the government of the day. And if this were a Conservative government, I would be making exactly the same point. Because, Mr Mayor, this is about the vocation, not about the politics. OK, thank you for your clarification. Mr Mayor, uh, I think it's been self-evident in the dialogue we've heard today uh, about where our priorities lie and to whom we're holding account. Um, frankly, I think that the most appropriate way for us to move forward is to move uh, a motion or a recommendation that is simply number one. Um, if you'll accept that as an amendment, I know I appreciate it's a foreshadowed moment, uh, motion, um, but I'd prefer it was an amendment. I, I actually think it would be better for the council for us to just intend to do that execute that and uh, omit items two, three, and I think four and five. That's materially different. And that'd be a matter for you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I, I think looking at that, I'll, I'll take it as a foreshadow, I think, okay. um, because materially um, it's quite, quite different. So with with that in mind, Mr. Mayor, I, I hope that councillors see this motion that we're considering today for what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And, and frankly, uh, my perception is that it, it unnecessarily, it is unnecessarily combative about an issue that we lack sufficient information about, and we should gather that information first before we embark on the uh, actions captured in items two to five. Okay, Councillor Jones, um, you mentioned before, just just saying, you mentioned before you would foreshadow, and item to have the. Uh, Motion to be item one only, am I right? That's correct, Mr Mayor. OK, well, take, your, take it on now as a foreshadow. Thank you. Um, you're speaking for or against? OK. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. I'll be, I'll be very brief. <laughs> but I'm, I'm more comfortable supporting this motion now with the number one that you've put forward um, because I think there's very little information in this media release to let me know exactly what the state government is intending with this community um, forum. Um, I go back to the days before I was a councillor and I used to represent the Chamber of Commerce and I used to, they used to have regional community cabinets down here, forums down here, and we'd make appointments with different ministers about what we want to talk about. It, all different community groups did that, not-for-profit groups, chambers of commerce, and I think that worked really well. Uh, we don't get the opportunity to do that on the Gold Coast anymore. So I'm not really sure what they're intending by just inviting certain members. We don't know how many people they're going to invite onto this um, cabinet, but I do know there's, whether it's um, in answer to a lot of public outcry that there's not a lot of community consultation by the state government, especially about public transport or things like that. There's certainly been uh, a lot of groups that are making a lot of noise. So maybe it is in, in, you know, in return for that, but I don't know. But I, 
I am, I am really concerned um, that it will undermine the local government representative because it, nowhere here does it actually say councillors. It says stakeholders, but I'm with um, Councillor Patterson. I don't think we'll get a gig. Yep. Okay. Now speaking against the motion. Councillor Owen Jones. Uh, just in case I don't get a chance uh, with the foreshadowed Mr Mayor, if I could just speak against it. And, and I fully appreciate Councillor Vorster's uh, passion. I don't think it's always combative. I think that it's, it's genuine passion. Um, but uh, my grandfather used to always say, you catch more flies uh, with honey than you do with vinegar. And I think that the, the original uh, intent of the um, recommendation that came to us effectively off the floor without us knowing it did come across as uh, with a little bit too much uh, bite and I think that for my mind paragraph one is the first step that we need to have. Um, I think that it's in, incumbent upon us as representatives of the residents in our community to engage with the government of the day as actively as possible. I, I would be as bold as to suggest that the, the misstep that's happened in recent days is the traditional format that the community cabinets have taken as they've gone to regional centres has given a public notice, it's given local community opportunity to attend and book an, a, a session with a relevant minister and then uh, that's taken a couple of hours, there's been a cup of tea and some scones from the lovely ladies at the Q QCWA generally. Um, and then the cabinet itself has gone off and met separately to that community process. Clearly what happened uh, yesterday was the cabinet met without the community process. Um, the mayor was lucky enough to get an invite and represented us ably in regards to our shopping list of engagement that we want to have with the state. but. Um, I think that talk of shadow councils and the voice and all of that type of stuff, I think it's a bit of a misdirection in the context of what the state may have been trying to attempt with their um, press release, clumsy as it may have been. So I think that uh, the bit, having skimmed through it, that I read that appealed to me was they're interested in growing our local economy and responding to emerging, emerging priorities particularly in the regards to the area that they have actually got a responsibility for. So um, we as local representatives, we don't need to be talking about um, the things that the state government or the state opposition should be talking about. I think our responsibility is to engage with them as constructively as possible in regards to the local government areas where we can actually make a difference and work collaboratively with them. So I think the idea of the, the one, um, which is foreshadowed, uh, gets us a really great starting point without labouring through all of the other points, which is effectively our advocacy going through to a, uh, the um, local government association. So um, I think we're a mature enough city to engage uh, sensibly with the government of the day, regardless of what colour that might be, Mr Mayor. Okay, speaking for the motion, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, and um, I'd like to support the current motion, and, and I understand the fact of the way we approach it with state government, but the four years I've been here, I don't think I've seen the Premier or a Minister in this room for addressing any of our concerns. As Councillor Patterson said, we've got the safer suburbs. We've had the planning scheme that um, we did all the community consultation, and again, that was thrown in our face. Uh, I know that we don't want to get involved in state matters. That is a state issue. But many a times a community comes to us about state matters and we try and go to the state to get support. I initially wasn't going to support it, but what this actually is sending a signal to the state government is that they need to come and talk to us as local representatives and when we have a real concern, ministers need to recognise we're the fastest growing city in Australia, and when we have a concern and we've listened to the residents, that they do attend this forum. <coughs> By having a separate form, forum outside of what we engage in could re relate to discussions that impact what we do as a city. So for me, I'm going to support this because this will send a, a signal to the state government 
whichever government may be, that if we have any concerns as a local government that relates to, lo that relates to state matters, we would expect to see a minister or someone of importance to be here to discuss it with us. Thank you. Councillor McDonnell. Um, Mr Mayor, uh, I'd, I'd just like to make um, a comment. Uh, there are regional um, community forums um, in Cairns, Townsville, down to Toowoomba. And um, what the state do, they recruit um, members uh, and out of the people who put their names forward, 20 people from each area um, are chosen. So, um, and these members advocate for their communities and they identify priorities that they think that the state government should undertake. So it, it's not like before where you could attend a town hall meeting uh, and people um, book in to go and express their concerns. These are hand-chosen people um, that advocate for the community. And I can understand um, the um, uh, resolution that's been put forward by um, Councillor Vorster. Um, in one way, I feel it's a little bit too strong. In another way, I, I really do feel that um, the state government should be questioned on, ha on how they're going to run these, especially when they're going out recruiting people and out of that community, there would only be 20 that they say represent the, um, our city when we've got the councillors here representing our city. Okay. I'll go to Councillor Vorster to close. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor, for the opportunity to close debate. And I want to acknowledge uh, that we do have a foreshadowed motion. Um, but, Mr Mayor, often a foreshadowed motion, at least for me, tempts me to find compromise. And it can feel as though not supporting the main motion isn't a total loss because there is a foreshadowed. But can I stress in this instance, Mr Mayor, that the foreshadowed motion will represent a loss. And it represents a loss because any outcome from the foreshadowed motion will only happen after the government has already taken action, which is to open an expression of interest and recruit people to this forum. So the foreshadowed motion might be tempting but it's a false economy. The main game has to be the substantive motion in front of you. And, Mr Mayor, supporting this motion does two things. Number one, in a collegiate way, it engages with the state government and affords them the opportunity to furnish us with the information they should have furnished you at the Cabinet meeting. And let me put this on the record. The LGAQ conference is some time away. And if the, if the Premier responds to your letter, Mr Mayor, and gives us all comfort, then I would say we withdraw our motion. But we can't afford to take that risk, Mr Mayor. We need to maintain the very live option of soliciting support from other local governments if we get poor advice from the government. Now, Mr Mayor, I believe the strongest contribution in the chamber today has come from Councillor Patterson. And that is because she highlighted that on the issue of the city plan, the single greatest opportunity that we had to deliver a real solution to the housing and rental crisis in the city, we begged and we pleaded with the government and we went as far as inviting the minister to meet with us and we got nowhere. On the issue of safety, we have had a standing invitation to the police minister to come speak with the Safer Suburbs Forum and we have got nothing. On the issue of fire ants, we had to drag the government kicking and screaming and even today they've effectively surrendered to fire ants. While not directly the position of the council, Mr Mayor, I do want to flag that Councillor Macdonald was at a community meeting held on the southern end of the Gold Coast that was attended by over 600 people for which 
the Transport Minister had months and months and months to make his way to that meeting and rearrange his very busy schedule. But he didn't turn up. My very real concern, Mr Mayor, is that if we do not challenge the government at this moment to rethink their relationship with us, they will continue walking over us. And when we are faced with very difficult decisions that we must take to protect the future prosperity of the city, we will afford the government an option to go somewhere else to get the answer that they might prefer. And for me, Mr Mayor, that carries with it enormous risk for the Gold Coast. I appreciate the arguments that have been progressed by, most importantly, Councillor Gates. She hopes that this Gold Coast Forum will limit itself to state matters. But even if that were the case, Mr Mayor, our levels of government are too entangled to hold the view that state decisions do not impact us, whether it's on the Olympic Games, the light rail, planning, biosecurity, community safety, the actions of the state entangle us. And I'm very concerned that an unelected group of people, unaccountable to the community through the ballot box, will be making decisions that are better than ours. I don't believe they will. Um, we have just endorsed the establishment, and really the establishment with people now of experienced Gold Coast. They should be our apolitical champions. We've constituted a board of apolitical champions. The Gold Coast Forum really exists, and it exists from this moment. We don't need a third leg on this tripod. It won't make the Gold Coast more stable. It will make it more politically instable, unstable. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Okay. Councillors, the debate's closed. Uh, put the motion to you. All in favour, show of hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Against? Motion carried. Councillors, no, no other staff. Uh, meeting closed, 1551. Staff, <laughs> staff no, staff business. business. <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs>